Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society podcast. I'm your host, my name is Chet Czar. Today we have the genius, and I do mean genius, artist, Paul Komoda. Uh, uh, he's got a new book coming out. It's his sketchbook in uh, book form. And, if, and his sketchbooks are legendary. I think I may have mentioned it when he's been on in the past. His sketchbooks are legendary. We talk about them. Uh, in the show and uh or in the interview and um uh i wanted to have him on to promote that and it's a a good excuse to say hi because we haven't caught up since before the pandemic so had a really great time talking to him always a great guest really interesting guy really uh great person and like i said he's he's brilliant so uh, i was happy to have him on that's coming up what's been going on with me Well, I have been helping get mystery boxes together. I just sold a bunch of mystery boxes and um, for the holidays. Still a few left if you want to get one. They're at uh, chetzar.bigcartel.com. What is the date? The date is the 29th of November as I'm recording this. I always say I'm going to... 2022. November 29th, 2022. I always think to myself, I'm going to start saying the um, date at the beginning of the podcast because, you know, we've been doing this for a while now. And, you know, a lot of people don't know about the podcast, so they might start listening to it and hear, hear me say something from four years ago that might sound weird because they don't realize it's four years old, but oh well. <laughs> just i can't remember to i can't i just can't seem to remember to say the date before every episode uh i'll try i'll keep trying maybe one day i'll get it uh anyway if you want to support the podcast you can go to patreon.com slash dark art society and you can uh, join for as little as a dollar a month if you join at the five dollar level you can uh, enter to win a skull from skull shop s-k-u-l-l-s-h-o-p-p-e dot com Here's one now. It's a skull shop skull. So great. Anyway, uh, I'll be doing that drawing uh, hopefully next week. Yeah, uh, I think next week. I don't know. Soon. Um, Yeah, if you join at the uh, $5 level, you will be entered into a drawing. That's it. Let's see. Patreon. Oh, I have my own personal Patreon. Patreon.com slash Chetzar. You can join that uh, if you like. Both Patreons actually, uh, you could join for just a buck. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, Yeah, I don't really have anything new to say. Let's just get on with the interview with Paul. It's a great interview. He's a great dude. So um, that's it. And uh, check the the body of the text below to see a link to go and buy his new sketchbook because it's amazing it really is his sketchbooks are they're mind-blowing so um yeah and we'll we'll mention it in the podcast as well you can go to paulcomoda.com to buy it but i'll put a direct link in the text okay that's it um let's get on with this interview enough of me yammering all right Here we go. What's up, Paul? Good afternoon, Chad. How are you doing? (laughs) It's been a little while. It has been a little while. Before the pandemic. uh, uh, We were right on the cusp of the pandemic when we last talked. I can't believe that. It's so crazy. It was an interesting time. We we would have known. (laughs) But uh, people would be scrambling for toilet paper and would be in lines and the shelves and the, uh, the Ralphs would be completely wiped out i know food. yeah it was After totally that. insane yeah you and, uh, you've been going through i mean i, I just i want to let people know right off the bat that um you know this is i it's just an excuse to talk to you because you're a friend and i like talking to you on the podcast you're a great guest yeah. but mm-hmm. but um you have a book that's coming out or that's yes, out now just, um, and i wanted to it's actually happening it, yeah mm-hmm. yeah it just seemed like a uh, uh, i want to make sure and get that in at the beginning because people need to get get this book i backed it on the kickstarter and um but people can buy it now 
uh, or yes, they can't buy it. Yeah. So, so, and it's going to be delivered soon, I believe. And it looks amazing. Yeah. It looks like it, uh, from uh, what my friends in Portland are telling me, uh, looks like things are going to be sent out, um, hopefully by Christmas, which would be very timely. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah. But meanwhile, pre-orders can be uh, found at, um, oh, is it uh, paulcommoder.com slash shop. Okay. And some uh, uh, pieces of original artwork for anyone that's interested in those uh, anomalies that, that are there too. So, yeah, um, and I'll nice I'll put that the link in the in the description as well, and we'll mention it oh, again, so much, at man. the end. Uh, yeah, of course, it's it's I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Your stuff's amazing. Everybody knows you're amazing. So um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm glad the book got done. Yeah, I, I tell you, we were um, it was um, delayed by um, circumstances beyond our control back in 2020. That was the, that was the initial plan because yeah. we kind of kicked things off in 2019 where um everything every, everything i owned um in, as far as like physical artwork uh was um was delivered was um taken by my friends in portland to uh, get things scanned and photographed oh wow really yeah 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 <clears throat> so it was a, it was an inter interesting feeling of just seeing piles and piles of stuff and I'm, i've still got <laughs> boxes of stuff yeah you have tons uh, of work currently in storage that i've not yet unpacked yet that they sent back yeah uh <laughs> It's it's the the concept uh, of the book is it's a sketchbook, right? Yeah, it's uh, and I've mentioned it before, but it was the kind of thing I never would have guessed in a million years that this would have been the thing that would have uh, kind of like been my would would have like uh, marked me out as oh he's the guy with the book, <laughs> and, and, and it was just it was merely started. Uh, I mean, I've kept sketchbooks for as long as I can remember, but uh, this was during my time in New York, and I was working for uh, some various companies as toy companies uh, specifically and in order not to go just to completely lose my mind because toy work you know uh, it, it's very regimental stuff mm -hmm. and, and, uh, it's, uh, it's it's not really it's not creative work at all and so I found I had to get keep keep that going uh, in my head the stuff that I've had in my head for the longest time through these books and things and, yeah. and it just gained uh, gained a certain uh, I guess an embodied um Kind kind of um, manifestation. I'm not even trying, trying to say here. Well, it, I mean, it some attention. You, you know? yeah, you, you were. I mean, every time I I see you at a show, you always have one of these sketchbooks, and and like that's it's one of the <laughs> events of of a show that you show up with is looking through your book because it's so incredible. I mean, it's, it's really funny, almost, they're you know, like, incredible. I've been, I've been, yeah, I mean, it's almost a performative thing. I go there with this big. This, in fact, there's um. We'll, we'll get to it later too. But uh, one thing that's been um something I've really been enjoying in recent days is uh, just taking this, this is gigantic book that I've got. Uh, um, I got it from my friend Norm Myers. Uh, it's, it's like a custom made sketchbook huge. It's like his mother made it. And since 2009, I've been just filling pages obsessively with uh, uh, drawings. And, and this has taken me through many states of like, uh, of, of hideous anxiety attacks depression Damn. Um, various um uh states of hedonic excess it's, it's all kind of like you know kind of a, just just it, it whatever was going on in my head i was expressing it onto the pages right time and i'd be like literally on the floor on the road just kind of like oh god what am i doing yeah, waking up every morning i was living in woodland hills in this huge apartment i don't know how the hell i was largest space i've ever lived in uh -huh. Somehow I, I I was making it month by month, but uh, it was in the middle of nowhere, and I was slowly going completely insane in that place for about two years. Wow! So the the one thing I could do in the meantime was um, you know, just I keep on scribbling in the sketchbook, and so some pages are just dense with them. right. Are the, are these? Uh, is this a new? Uh, th these aren't in the book. This is like a new. Oh sketchbook. no! This is yeah. This is completely separate. This I'm will be volume for, two. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping this is what comes next because they scan. I'm hoping they scanned a lot of what was in there, if not everything. But uh, I've since then, since I've gotten it back, I've um, lodged in just like pages of new artwork into it, and yeah. I'm painting over things and uh, redrawing certain parts. And I, I don't want to redraw the entire book because it would tend to be the purpose. But right. certain pages, I'm like, no, that that needs to be augmented. Or, or I've got an idea for this. This, this would be a cool composition here with this character. Right. Um, so so that's what I've been, and it's just. And the beauty of it, if it's just me on drawing, uh, on it's Bristol. pure, it's pure in yeah. that way. There's not like an objective other than to express an idea in a sketchbook. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. it's like, that's how we start drawing when we're kids. And that's, and that's, that's, uh, that's a good point because again, going back to being a kid, like I was, I've always been a collage artist. I've always taken like, uh, 
whether it was my magazines or my own artwork and mm -hmm. just out with scissors and creating, creating these weird crazy montages of things and, and, just, and just gluing things together and then it's literally what i'm doing now is uh, yeah just drawing things or just cutting things out and mm -hmm. arranging them. and this is glue and scissors and paper that's so yeah. Yeah, that's so funny because it. yeah the, yeah it's one of i've got some of the earliest artwork i have um I don't know. It's somewhere around here. I got it. It's like every time I think about it, I'm like, I got to take pictures of it because every once in a while I'll post pictures on social media, but it's been so long at this point. But um, I remember my mom t showing me how to do collage when I was really little, you know, probably five years old or something. And I, I did this whole series of collage pictures and they're so fucked up. They're so <laughs> weird. They're really disturbing. Like I took you know someone's head some weird person's head and then i put a leg where their arm would be oh and, a, God, and a weird intense. body and i put the eyes upside down and it's like they're really demented looking <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 really funny so uh, are, they, are they preserved anywhere yeah, they're in a book they're in like a an old construction paper oh my God, that's book. you know remember those old books they were like slightly like uh, like like a brown piece and then like a kind of gray green piece of construction paper and then like a grayed out red do you remember these they're like it's like that yeah, 70s construction paper color anyway yeah um I, t I remember somehow we had a bunch of greeting cards i don't know like wacky 70s greeting cards i don't know how we got them it was like oh i know because my mom had a she had a uh a store at one point like she tried starting a, a store that sold greeting cards and stickers and stuff like this and so we had all these extra greeting cards at home so i'd like cut out pictures from the greeting cards and then cut out stuff for magazines it's like oh, so cool. much fun so much fun oh yeah yeah so i can yeah. i can definitely relate to the collage thing um no, no, yeah, it's funny. i've got one of my old scrapbooks i think i think it's still back at my parents house i'll just grab that one this is yeah. a, lot my, a lot of my old life it's all the paper's a little the Dead Sea Schools at this point, but I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like you know, gluing in things from famous monsters, yeah, from yeah, movie ads from wherever, yeah, yeah, it's so fun. So, so now, yeah, so now I'm doing it with my own artwork now. You know, I'm just like taking things and, and then just kind of creating a narrative, you know, and then and that's sort of like, um, and these, these, again, characters I've had since um, long as I can remember. That's and, cool. And then so it's sort of like, it's kind of what I'm trying to get back to at this point. I mean, because again, getting will jump back and forward a little bit but there's so much has happened within the last uh, year or so but uh in the meantime what i've been trying to do and and i thought and i kept saying this is going to be the year of change on whatever messy level that happens mm -hmm. that's messy of of finally just trying to redirect or do some course correction and return to um um, um principally working on my own work and and um yeah, and, you, you know, to a large degree, and, and that's been happening. Um, yeah, yeah, you need to be working on your own work. I mean, you're just you're one of those artists that has a you're you know, uh, you're. I know that the word gets tossed about, but it's true. It's like you are one of the you're like a visionary. You have a vision. It's unique. <laughs> you're amazing. I mean, you're really. I hold you in the highest regard. Really, it's like you, you know, I uh, you you. You remind me a bit of Christopher Ulrich, not in the in in your style, but as far as like people that obsessively crank out amazing work in sketchbooks. You know, Christopher's like this as well. Mm -hmm. you oh know? yeah, and uh, you guys are both kind of like on that genius, artistic genius, oh, well, obsessive creators. Yeah. I really am inspired by your work, big time. Yeah, oh, amazing. You. Your your stuff's everybody knows this though. I mean, if you know if people. Who know you will know when i'm saying this i'll be like yep <laughs> people that don't know you need to go look at your your work and 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 you know you just have to look at one of your sketchbooks and it's like oh shit, yeah, this, this dude is like about, yeah. on a whole yeah. other level so uh i really i wish i could honestly my sketches are so i love sketching but you know i just do these a lot of my sketches are just like I'm just trying to get the idea out and they end up being a painting and I don't have a lot of time. So it's hard for me to put time in <laughs> yeah. the sketches, mm -hmm. uh, the way that you do and just fill them up. I just, uh, uh, I, so I, I really admire you guys being able to just like, you know, cause the sketchbooks are 
works of art in themselves, you know? Oh, it's like, it's a, I think that the reason I got obsessive with the artwork in the sketchbooks is because I didn't have time to do large paintings. Right, or, yeah. Uh, or, <laughs> it's kind of I'm like, more, you know, six of one, yeah, half a dozen of another. Yeah, sculptor, you're being hired to sculpt something, you know, you know they're checking on you, in, on you every few days. Hey, how's that progress going? And so you're constantly having to, like, you know, yeah, yeah, keep, yeah. Like, keep slinging that clay. So I said, well, in the meantime, I'm just going to, like, uh, work on this idea. because I got this, kind of, suddenly this, this inspiration hit me. And I'll just obsess with the work on that. And hopefully in time, this will manifest as something larger. Right. Uh, it's something that uh, Travis Louie and I were talking about just last night, actually, like um, the whole idea of like taking small sketches or, uh, or, or just little bits of this. I'll, I'll show you this book. Um, well, yeah. it's funny that you mentioned Travis because he called me like 10 minutes before. And oh, I'm cool. like, oh, I'm interviewing Paul. I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the book and this is the one i've been bringing around for for those who are just listening it's a big patchwork cover of like all these stickers and yeah. things and it's like the cover is so leathery at this point it's amazing like, oh, wow. it's so cool but it's just like pages and pages of just crazy it's like and again this is like years uh of all my time out in yeah since i've been in la it's unbelievable uh, i've just so cool again like there's like some of some of this is silly some of it's but uh but again yeah getting back into it and saying it says okay i like what's uh, coming on this page but there needs to be something you know i'd like yeah, to yeah yeah tie, tie it in together it's with more. so cool man so it's so yeah i can't wait i can't wait to see the book i'm really excited about it uh i just can't wait to see it um so okay what has been going on with you since the last time we spoke, because I know you've been through a million <laughs> different things. <laughs> it sounds like, and I don't know any of them. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I got to tell you, it's like I'm not going to tell you because <laughs> um, all of 2020 was it was it was um how would I describe that? My friend Bob Fingerman, he's an incredible comic artist uh, who I've been friends with since. Uh, um the school of visual arts days mm -hmm. um, he, he described that whole period as the great blur mm. it's just it's just like one day flows into the next and you're wondering what the hell is going on so I, but i think i was able to maintain a, a, a bit of focus during the period and get some work done also yeah also, uh, trying to get back to my personal work and things like that so that and on that level it was, it was kind of it was kind of wonderful yeah and um trying to think of where things um, began to pick up again because um i know there's stuff that happened beforehand but also I, well, okay, okay that's the big thing the silver lining of that entire period was that somehow synapses connected and i and i knew how to use zbrush mm. not all the way but oh uh, that's it, right i did see you messing around yeah, with i wanted to get on that for years I mean, yeah I get out here. the plan was okay i'll do whatever the hell i gotta do <laughs> Uh, forever long and then pick up digital and that'll be my thing and it just didn't happen that way and, you know, and once i tried to like i took a course and all that and i looked at what we had you know looked at the you know the, the massive lovecraftian you know, you know kind of like interface I thought, right. oh, I, I just i just can't wrap my head around this shit yeah it's and then somehow i was able to like you know, you know somehow by the end of 2020 something clicked something came together and i was like hey i can kind of do this because it was started off it was a free program called core mini which is basically gives you the equivalent of a digital kneaded eraser, this little blob. It's very simplistic. So the most pared down version of what ZBrush actually mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And so it's a couple of buttons, like a squish, pull, inflate. Right. And um, and and it's kind of you can't do a hell of a lot, but I was able to say, oh, you know, I'm kind of getting this. And then uh, my friend Dave Iga was um uh, teaching a course. Um, you know, as I always try to keep, send people his way if um they're if they're, if they're wanting to learn this, mm -hmm. um, because he's still teaching the course, but. Uh, so I took this course, and then, and even then, I'm thinking, "Wow, um, there, there is shit here that is just going way over my head." Yeah, yeah, for sure. But he's got this way of breaking things down, so you're going from, you know, you're not looking at the whole monstrous mind melting thing. You're just going from point A to point B to point C, mm -hmm. and here's here, and and with that um, that point, you, you gradually start to comprehend things. Um, to the point where there are things that I'm just casually doing now that I wouldn't have been able to have done last year at right. all. And I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of bopping along. So, and there's a hell of a lot and I'm still at the very bottom of this whole thing, but, um, 
It was the Zoom idea. Work. Did you want to learn ZBrush for uh, film work, like creature design? Uh, or? Just, just for, yeah, just for everything, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. I kept thinking, wherever things are going, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be able to avoid this. And it's also something I really wanted to do. Yeah, it's amazing. It's an amazing yeah. program, for oh, sure. God. And um, again, I'll show you something else. Um, this is something, these are... These are printouts of um, some toys I had sculpted um, earlier this year. Wow, really? Or, yeah, it's for, again, Dave Iga, who's a company. I mean, he was the one that was... Um, That's so cool. Of course. And, That's amazing. Uh, and he's, he's got a company called Monstors. Uh -huh. and, um, and we were doing these like, kind of like miniature, and these are big miniatures, but... Um, right. That's amazing, know, just, man. Just, it still looks, it looks like you, you did it, too. That's what's cool about it. It yeah, it's cool. funny. A couple of people said that you know you're still your your style still shines through to it. But yep. again, just going, I had, you know almost no time on this guy, and I thought, how the hell am I going to get all that shit on this thing? And yeah, you know, right. I somehow pulled out uh, some techniques out of my ass. I was able to like replicate forms and patterns and distort them enough so they don't look so obvious. All right. And create these crazy. Uh, um, yeah, there's kind of people reptilian details. It's on so things. cool. Amazing. And what's amazing is all the detail is there. It's not like, you know, because I used to do toy work and it'd be heartbreaking when you got stuff back from China. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's not really what I did. But <laughs> here it's like everything is absolutely refined. And so I mean, there's a shell back here made of demon skulls. It's and so cool, man. And it's just all, um, you know. As fine and sharp as you can possibly. Yeah, want. it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. So yeah, so that, yeah, that, was, yeah. An, that was another thing. That was another breakthrough in the last year or so. I was like, hey, I can finally do this stuff. Yeah, hey, and if you get you you know, if you get to that point, you can. Three D printers are so cheap now too. You could actually buy your own three D printer and just like make the stuff, and print oh the God. stuff, and yeah. sell the stuff or whatever. It's like, I was That's just looking at them the other day, and they're so cheap. Mm. I just haven't had time to. You know, like I, I still have to learn ZBrush again. I have to relearn it because it's like I knew it at one point enough to do stuff for uh, Land of the Lost. That yeah. I was working on that, doing stuff in ZBrush. And then I just stopped after I left. That was right. The last job I worked on in the business. And then I forgot it, completely forgot it. And then I started messing with it again. And I just didn't have time for it. But it's like 3D printing. You got to learn a bunch of uh weird things about that too like how to set your model up and all this technical stuff and it's just like man the older we get the less time we have for that stuff <laughs> no, it's like, it's like, it was a feeling too it's like oh my god it's like i'm at this midpoint mm -hmm. over the midpoint at this point i'm learning all this new stuff it's yeah i wish i was at the midpoint i would feel better I if i was at the midpoint it'd be pretty cool if i lived lived another 55 years it's a grim pop, but you do get to that point. Says, well, yeah, we're at that juncture where people just, uh, yep, uh, yeah, they're just taken out of the party sometimes a bit <laughs> early. You know? it's been, and not to get too grim, but boy, it's it's been a brutal year for mortality for just like you know people and respected artists and things. Yeah, and, right. I know. So um, seems yeah, like, seems like there's a new death every. Yeah, no, and doing this so it's crazy. crazy. Like, like, oh man, uh, the, the whole thing with the uh, um, Jung Ji Kim. Um, yeah, that was crazy too. Uh, no, that was like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. There's, there's nothing right with the universe right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just you know, that's that. That the only way I can, uh, you know, you see a guy like that who's clearly this dude is in his own realm. It's complete. 100% genius, you know, just incredible, incredible. And then randomly to die like that at such a young age, it's like the only thing that make, gives me any kind of like the, what I basically where my mind has to go to accept it is like, you know what, when it's your time to die, it's just time and you just do it. It's like yeah, everyone yeah. has this kind of like rough date where they're going to die and you're just going to die on some uh, cosmic yeah, no, level yeah, or it's something. Out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's too further, you know, far into the future to really even contemplate it right now. But yeah, yeah, right. Boy, I tell you. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, it, it, it'll keep you up late at night. If you don't <laughs> I try not to. I just try to, like, I, I try to like, 
indulge in the moment and, and, yeah yeah that's the only thing you can do is just so, like, yeah exactly which um, be in the moment um, be in the moment because that's all yeah, you got yeah. anyway that's all you got yeah now speaking of being in the moment i i guess i guess i can talk about this it's uh, something that happened to me a few months ago okay now, um I, again for you know people that know me it's uh, i i you know i i do i do experiment with some interesting uh substances sometimes and um I've not, and so far, I, I, and I have not yet done DMT. I know we keep saying whenever, I think whenever we've interviewed. Uh, yeah, well, have you tried DMT? I, I, it's like, have you done it yet? It's like, uh, <laughs> I'm working on it. But um, um, something happened where I, I was um, experimenting. I had some ketamine. I'm kind of new to ketamine. Oh, uh, yeah, I've never tried and, ketamine. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I've only ever taken it in conjunction with something else, with, whether it's like mushrooms or... Uh, wow, that sounds some, intense. Because some, 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 mushrooms are it's a whole added dimension of the visuals, I think. Mm -hmm. that, really, uh, that really was uh, pretty extraordinary. I remember thinking, um, wow, this is first day of school stuff. I've never experienced anything quite like this before. Hmm. Um, but jumping ahead, I'm jumping back a little bit... Um, this was um shit maybe three four months ago mm -hmm. and um I was on a little bit of acid and very mild and all that and i thought okay now it's time to like now, now it's time to like take things up a notch and i had some yeah you know so on, on, on the house and like hey uh, yeah just because you're cool here here here's a little bit mm -hmm. so i i thought i knew the right dosage for this thing and for all i know maybe it was the right dosage i just want to like you know it's a little for those who don't know, it's a little powdery thing, and I hate snorting anything. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Put it down, you know, it's a little brass rod. Okay, well, I got about half an hour before King Things kick in. It's a pleasant little derangement. I mean, I, uh, I, uh, oh, oh, fuck. Everything <laughs> froze. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm sitting there in front of my computer like I'm right now. Everything froze, not even like, uh, like, like, like high definition. This was like, Freezing a old uh, like a uh, videotape or something. Oh my Brrr. god! <laughs> Everything's gonna like uh, um. I felt like everything was gonna be in a blank, dark aquarium. And oh, okay, I, I'm gonna try to articulate this as quickly and succinctly as possible. But all I remember is you know I'm listening to um, Massive Attack, Mezzanine, wonderful album. Yeah, it's a great album. This kind of thing. And um, all I can say is it felt like for about half an hour, I became the music. It was this thing where, uh, you know, like Martin Ball talks about the non-dual experience where you're just like pure experience. There's no sense of like yourself or your or a body mm -hmm. or just this condition that's kind of like hurtling forward. And, and then the music is everything. It's the only thing that defines you. Wow. And I kept sort of seeing things and, and all that. And and it just wouldn't stop. And then I remember getting, getting coming back here, here there then <laughs> a little bit then like, oh my god oh, um, i can sort of touch the, the, my, my mouse and i can see the cursor moving okay i can total my toes okay but i'm i kept my big fear was like oh my god i've completely ruined myself as as a human being as an artist mm -hmm. i'm going to be drooling in in some like uh in a wheelchair for the rest of my life being spoon fed uh you, you know and, and it's like uh what the hell so we're talking about that randomness of like maybe paul this is your time this right was, <laughs> you know, i was convinced this was it i thought if, if this is if i just disintegrate at this point into fucking atoms uh uh i should have expected it i mean this is kind of this sort of this sort of a poetry to this i suppose <laughs> But, uh, and then it went into this completely chaotic, like, uh, like it was like going into a storm cloud of, of fucking, like, a cosmic storm cloud, which sounds horribly cheesy, but it was like, it felt that way. Everything was bright blue and white. I could see things that looked like black roots kind of coalescing into these giant, like, rectangles, like, brick like rectangles and separating. Wow. And, um, so this, was, was this, you were like... Like you were in that environment seeing it, or was this kind of like in your mind you were it was, seeing it? it? A, it's a hard one to describe because again, like I said, like there's no me anymore. All right, all right, right. But it's a sense of like I, I feel like uh, I actually heard it described in another on in another interview. Uh, someone felt like there was someone else's dream. Someone else was dreaming them. Oh wow! And, what a and I felt like that much. I felt like a bit character in someone else's thing. Oh my god! Um, what a there was any sense of like myself at all? It's when, and it, and it wow. just seemed to go on to the point where I'm just seeing light and 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 just and hurtling just hurtling you know through through um these these these, these uh um volcanic kind of uh um explosive um worlds sounds like it reminds me of the uh altered states some of those scenes in altered states it was like... kind of like that yeah <laughs> when you're, yeah in fact i'd say it was very much like if i had to equate it to anything cinematically 
it kind of was like that scene in the lab when everything blows up mm-hmm. and, he's, and he's just disintegrating and turning into this vortex and interesting it's kind, of, it's kind of the same feeling interesting and then you're finally kind of sort of trying, trying to coalesce you're trying to find ways to kind of bring yourself back to the point where you can even move right and just, and just were you alone it. yeah yeah wow. my guinea pig. and that was the one thing that brought me back like in the movie, uh, you know, John Hurt. You know, I, mean, I mean, I'm William Hurt. He's got Blair Brown to bring him back. I had my, I had my guinea pig, Mr. B, Bubble, and I kept thinking, who's going to feed Mr. B? And so I kept seeing this little brown thing in front of me. Going, That's <laughs> great. You know, and so that was the one kind of touchstone of reality that I could, I could hold on to. That's amazing. And, uh, but boy, and it just, and I kept, here's the, here's an interesting thing, thing too. And then this is probably because I don't, I could, this could drag out for another hour, but <laughs> no worries. Uh, I kept seeing weird phantom images of spiky kind of silhouettes of things. Uh, Cause kind of nasty looking. And I kept thinking, uh, you know, when I had thought, I kept thinking, Oh my God, those are weird thought forms of who I thought I might be at a certain point in my life. Where, where, wow. where I was trying to be, where I was trying to aspire for, uh, you know, just just being kind of like cool and nasty and whatever. Wow! <laughs> I don't know. Wow! And I, I just saw this this weird pretension and, and right and it's, it's kind of folly that you see these past ghosts of all these identities that you that I tried to slip into, I suppose. So interesting. And so that that was that was a, an interesting lesson and. Uh, and all I can say is that that condition went on for far longer than I ever imagined anything would. Uh, How long just, do you oh, think? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It seemed to go on for hours. I mean, the oh point my was, God. I, I went to a bit. It seemed to be I went into that point around midnight. And by the time I felt myself, because I, eventually I was able to like get up. I felt as light as Balta would. You went, point, 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 point out the fashion of walls and things. Mm-hmm. Went onto the bed and just kind of sat there and kind of laid there going, oh, oh my God. And, you know. And then by the time things were able to, you know, cold off enough for me to actually get up and move, you know, light was coming through the window. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But the uh, extraordinary thing about that whole thing, as horrendous and terrifying as it was, um, you, you know, um, I felt fantastic in the morning. And really? I really felt like I had done some house cleaning. Wow. And, um, so, and I felt really, really pretty elevated and amazing for the rest of my week. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's, they're treating some uh, uh depression it's apparently some people respond really strongly to that you know to people with bad depression i think i forget what the percentage was but it was like a pretty high percentage of people uh respond really positively to that in a therapeutic setting you know? yeah yeah like i just i, I saw some video on it, it was like this one woman was like completely cured me it was like i had this depression for years i couldn't get rid of it and it just is, was gone after like i don't know a certain number of sessions mm. wow. yeah. it would be yeah. you know i imagine it might be easier if there was if it was in a therapeutic setting i think so too because someone you know, telling you it's okay you're not disintegrating mm-hmm. you're, you're not gonna wind up in a <laughs> wheelchair <and rolling>. <laughs> <laughs> what, i know that's the thing it's like you, you know there's never been a known death from you know from from overdosing on mushrooms or acid or any of that stuff as far as i know yeah. psychedelics but still you get to that point and you're like i could be the first one <laughs> which, is, which is like they lied to me <laughs> which is total ego when you think about it like you know yeah, it's, it's completely ego going ah! <laughs> it's like me i'm the one i'm the one who died i'm special i'm the one who died <laughs> yeah yeah I, I am the one that would be sacrificed on the altar of this <laughs> horrible lie well, yeah. I'm Christ like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I've yeah, never, so I've never done it. And, and it had some long lasting effects. I mean, even when I had to move, which uh, on uh, other circumstances would be kind of a traumatic, awful, grinding experience, which on some level it always is. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to, I, I kept telling people, I'm in the best headspace to be in a kind of a rough situation right now. So. Wow. Um, got me through all of that. It's such a trip, yeah. man. It's such a trip. It's weird because it, it's like, you know, when you think about it, it's it makes it seem like medicine, you know, uh, uh, because, you know, when you take a drug that treats an illness, it just gets you better. It doesn't put you through some big uh, journey and show you things that make you realize and and get rid of the illness it just fixes the problem in it and it almost seems like um 
that's like that with with this stuff maybe where it's where it doesn't because you know some psychedelic trips are like you heal because you see all this stuff you deal with childhood mm -hmm. trauma this and that and it seems like because of that experience you heal when you come out of it although but this one almost seems like it just did kind of did some healing and it just showed you a bunch of weird shit that maybe yeah. you know maybe yeah. was some kind of like symbolic representation of things but uh, of trauma or whatever um and it, you did see the kind of versions of yourself which you know okay but it doesn't seem like the visions unless i'm misunderstanding it doesn't seem like the visions that you saw of these char spiky characters gave you this that's that wasn't the reason you came out feeling better it seems like you just were treated by this medicine and it made you feel better although yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. i'm wrong i don't know but although it is interesting to see like uh, um have an external view of your life and your yeah but, yeah 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 so i mean yeah, oh wow i went through all of that and uh, i was mad at one point i was mad at one point is i mean is that what you went through in there you were you going through something like that where you were sure it felt like that, a, a little bit it's okay kind of like, uh, i mean here's your life so far and oh, okay and, and oh I, so it was was it did have that element of uh you know showing you things and, yeah yeah a bit of life and review and a bit of like uh okay i'm gonna pull you all the way out and then put you right back in and, yeah interesting you know, what happens now so yeah so i feel but i i don't know why that it, that particular um maybe it was just a combination i don't know um, yeah that's a, <laughs> that is pretty crazy <laughs> uh, there was also i'm like well paul you don't really need to do this anymore <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah you know it was just a feeling of like uh, whatever you wanted you were looking for since you set out on this absurdist journey back in the 80s and you, you kind of got a couple of answers tonight right but, uh, yeah, yeah you know you can never tell you know, the future is the future is wide and open you know? yeah right <laughs> wow well that's cool thanks for sharing that that's that's yeah, interesting yeah, sure, i'm always sure. always good have, to have you ever experienced anything like that yourself or um no you know not really uh you know the first time i took acid i had the it was really strong and it was you know i don't think ever ever like that again it was so intense and it yeah. lasted from maybe three in the afternoon until it was light out the next day it was strong and crazy and uh oh my god yes yeah. those first those first experiences are yeah. again they're, they're it's the same level of very very just like again disintegrating terrifying yeah it was mostly great though for me it was like fun i was with my best friend at the time and um you know i was yeah, like yeah, yeah. 18 or 19 and so we were able to kind of like you know be there for each other and it was our first time for both of us and the only negative part was at the very end where we were coming back but things were still weird and i was seeing you know i i've talked about it before where we were in our, my garage my parents garage it was converted into a music studio for my brother's band so it was like all the windows were blocked out so there wasn't mm -hmm. really any light in there just through the like crack in the door and i was looking at the wall and i could just see plain as day like someone was projecting a 16 millimeter movie of an animation of a skeleton guy riding a, a grim reaper riding a wow. skeleton horse Oh my God. over a mat over like a hill just like the you know it's like an animation where it was just he's galloping in place and the hill mm -hmm. and the, and there was like ground was moving like like kind of a round ground and so it was just like on this loop the grim reaper oh my God. <laughs> and it, but it but it was like at the time i was like oh my god it's so cool i'm seeing this movie and it wasn't like it would go away i just sitting and watching it but the only negative was at the very end when we were still you know you come out of it but you still feel weird you're, you're like the the you know you're you're coming down the crazy stuff is over but you feel weird and we were both like what if we never come out of this <laughs> <laughs> what if we're just always like kind of weird like this and that was pretty scary uh but that was you know probably just the ego coming back in it's reestablishing yeah, yeah. itself and trying to trying to dominate but uh, yeah. other than that, it was great. It was really. Oh, yeah, fun. No, another thing is when yeah that, that first time that I did it with my friend, like there was just that one maybe a half hour period when it was really horrifying, and I just felt so insignificant and small, and mm. all that level of, uh, uh, yeah, you know, everything's just so huge and mm -hmm. one of my, this little tiny thing and all that. 
but um, um, the, the mountain that was pretty extraordinary. There's, I mean, there's things that I think what's interesting is like the imagery you pick up from these experiences. It's like stuff you carry for the rest of your life. I mean, there. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, I may have mentioned this before, but uh, I remember one of the most resonant images that I saw that night. It was October. We were in New Jersey, Marlboro, New Jersey, kind of this expansive lawn at night in the rain. And made everything glistening, and the, the grass looked like a pile of basket woven horn lizards, horn heads. Oh, wow. White green just heaped up on top of each other, a very vivid image. And I'm just like, man, this is so beautiful. And, and it's, it's something I've always wanted to paint or draw. Right, or right. I've drawn the horn toes, but I haven't, really got, I haven't drawn the, the lawn yet. But that's, that's I, had, I had one like that where I was looking, because that's one thing that actually never left me. It's like I still can. I haven't thought about it lately, but I think it's still that way. But I mean, it, it's probably still that way. But but uh, definitely for years after, I would see the I would see patterns in nature and in the grass and in the way leaves are, and you see this like these fractals almost. Oh yes, yes and yes, it's yes. but it's like it's so weird because it's it's not like you're tripping or anything, but you can see these sort of fractal patterns. But one time I was looking tripping and looking at the grass out in front of my uh, friend's house and it was writing something in the grass and it looked like <laughs> what's that cure album uh where it's like oh uh the head on, uh it's remember the writing for i don't remember what album it was a head on the door or it was that uh you know that's uh oh, uh uh, uh that here. <laughs> you know that um yeah, that song. You know that song where it's like my head on the the head on the door was a dream. Din, din, din. It's the one with the horns in it. <laughs> okay, I'll be like, I'll be like, oh, it's that one. It's like the best Cure song. It's my favorite Cure song. Uh, anyway, it had this kind of curly Tim Burton style writing on the album cover. But anyway, the writing looked like that. I think it's head on the door i'm gonna look it up but um it was it, i was looking at the grass and it was spelling this message out for me and i couldn't read it and it's like i was trying to read it and then it went away and i was like oh man it was trying to tell me something and i couldn't read it it's like i get that in dreams too where i've had these kind of hypnagogic states where i'm half in between mm -hmm. waking and dreaming and i see a book and there's a bunch of text like on the book and I just can't quite make the text out. It's oh my god, so that's like I've had so many dreams like that uh, where I'm I have to read something. It's usually on my phone, and I'll pick up my phone, and it's just abstract glyphs moving around and around. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Or uh, yeah. Or I've had uh, anxiety dreams where I need to buy a ticket out of a machine for a train, and the machine makes no sense. It's like this old kind of like it looks like an old bubblegum machine or something like that. You got to hit these dials and these buttons. Right. That's why I'm allowed to get the ticket. But, I've. Um, um, I. I. Uh, I mean, I've definitely seen weird symbols too, and like floating in front of me in that weird half half asleep state. I remember I had when I first started uh, taking those magic classes and learning magic. I had a really yeah. weird one that I don't even I still don't understand it, but it was like a night scene. This was a just a dr straight mm -hmm. up dream, like, but it was kind of like a lucid dream. It felt like I was really there. It was a night scene. It was a desert, and it was like. Uh, like it was Egypt. It was like ancient Egypt. And there was, it's hard to, it's hard to explain, but there was like a movie camera, like an old movie camera. And it was projecting onto this kind of old Egyptian, kind of Egyptian brick kind of wall. And there was a, sort of pentagram shaped star that was cut out of the wall and it was like projecting through that and it was just like it felt significant <laughs> but i didn't know what the hell it meant you know but uh i love those images you know there's certain things that are like that where it's so i've had dreams that are like that you know, uh-huh no hallucinations involved it would literally yeah. just be a dream that would be very vivid and it would have some imagery in it or some symbols in it that would be so profound to me in the dream i wake up going holy shit and i remember one was a simple it was well not simple really but i was the back of my street where i grew up maple stream road and the skies were dark and there's like trees and houses it's very suburban and the sky was almost red in, in the darkness or there were storm clouds and things and there were these two 
almost like neon rings hanging in the air. One was red. I think the other one was bright light blue or something like that. And maybe one was rotating or something. Mm. But for some reason, that that image stuck in my head as like that fucking. <laughs> I have no, I have no idea what that means, but I just woke up like, holy fuck! Yeah, you know, <laughs> it seems very occulty. Okay, here it is. Yeah, yeah head yeah. on the door. Oh, okay, okay. That kind of writing, like sort of yeah. swirly, oh. and it was in the grass. Anyway, oh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. I missed the message. Damn it! Um, so. Well, well, okay. What's been so? What's been going on with you? I know that uh, uh, you've. You've moved a couple times. You're yeah, getting ready to move again. again. You're moving again very shortly. You know, I mean, I'm in um, Eagle Rock right now. It's a lovely town. I like to stay here. Actually, I'm trying to, uh, you know, put my tendril down to, to see if there's any place uh, local. Oh, Eagle Rock is cool. Yeah, it, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's an adorable neighborhood. Yeah, it's, it's really walk, nice. You know? I have a friend. Yeah, who and uh, a one sign that told me it was cool is like I was walking. Oh, it's so funny. This was a few weeks ago. I was just like taking my first walk around town, seeing, just getting familiarized with the area. In my head, I'm always thinking. What if I found a guinea pig just running around just on the sidewalk? I'm looking for a friend for my guinea pig bubble. Mm-hmm. I mean, what if I just found one just kind of running around like a squirrel would and all that? Mm-hmm. And um knocking down past you know certain blocks, and then I hear the parrots. The par- we, we have parrots in the area. Yes, we have um, parrots. I first saw them in Pasadena, and so I was following the parrots and I hear them in the trees. And following oh, oh, oh they're down the next block. And so I went there and oh, there they are. Oh my god, these little green parrots. And then I turned behind me and down this dirt path between two houses, there's a little black lump. And I'm like, no, there's no fucking way that could be what I think it is. Then it moved, the head bobbed up. I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Took my camera, went over to that it. That was, sure you, showed a, tiny, you showed the video yeah. of that. Yeah, a little tiny black guinea pig is like loose in the wild. And, and it turns out, you, you know, it's it's uh, got uh, this bit of history, you know, the plot thickens. And um, it turns out it wasn't it landed in this one neighbor's uh, yard and decided to stay there. I mean, meanwhile, it's it escaped from a house, a couple of, you know, maybe a couple of houses over on the same block. I was like, and how's a guinea pig surviving in an area with coyotes and, right. like, and stuff? But it, yeah, wound up in this uh, woman's yard and she's been taking care of it. I, I that. saw and that video I'll... you posted. And I was like, that has to be, he must <laughs> take his guinea pig out for a walk. Cause there's no way I've never, I don't never heard of anybody finding a guinea pig out in the wild. Even yeah, even one like, that ran away from home, you know, it's yeah, like and he's like uh, he's not camouflaged either. He's just, he's yeah, just right. a uh, black blob. So anyone that's looking for him, but and, and there's a dog in the yard too. Looks like a tough customer, but apparently the dog and the guinea pig get along real well. It's like a Disney, it's a, like a Disney movie. And you found so, it after yeah, wondering. Somehow I found a- somehow after the parents led me to the guinea pig. <laughs> so uh, it's a matter of like you know that's I mean, amazing, man. That's like a completely <laughs> that's like magic. 101 <laughs> that's like super profound really i mean yeah the fact, also the fact that it's a black pitch black guinea pig too is the funniest thing <laughs> some sort of it's the it's the, <laughs> it's the guinea pig <laughs> guinea pig that you were meant to have so did you are you able to get the guinea pig well we're discussing it because um i'm talking i mean in constant contact with the one we were texting each other she's saying and she's trying to find a way to because the catching is the whole thing okay and uh and you also have to, yeah that, you have to have that guinea pig you have to have it. Uh, that's the thing there, there were also two people that were also looking for it as well um but it seemed to be kind of there seemed to be kind of a loose attitude towards uh who actually gets it they're like um, i don't know she said if i can if i caught it it could be mine too but if you want it and Right. So I'm like, wow. I'm yeah, you just have to be you have to be assertive and say, look, I really want this. I have another guinea pig. I'm yeah, a guinea pig person. Just, you uh, know, <laughs> I'm fine and yeah, I, I know guinea I know guinea pigs. Yeah, yeah, you do. So um uh, yeah, it's just a matter of like finding a way to grab my son just, just yesterday I saw him again. I don't think he was on like, oh and I got close and he ran away. That's crazy, um, man. That's so yeah. crazy. So I, you I, you just need to like rig some kind of trap with like a fall yeah you know? yeah i know or, or at least get him comfortable enough it'll just like, right oh, yeah and, that's true you know or, or it'll go into a box or something like that so <laughs> i can't we'll, believe we'll it's this. so amazing I, I i know that was like well, i was like okay there's so many serendipitous things that have been happening like that like i'm mean, just this yesterday again well that's good uh, I, that's yeah, a good sign into, man that means uh, i always take that as like you're on the right path yeah um uh even yesterday when i was at sprouts i was on i was it was so funny because I was saying earlier that once you enter a certain community, like say uh, the golf community or something like that, those are pretty much people that you'll be seeing for the rest of your life, no matter where you go. Right. <laughs> and because also it's just like at random, I was just grocery shopping yesterday at Sprouts locally. 
And uh, there's a tall, sort of gothy looking person in the line in front of me. What the hell? And I was sort of distracted and I heard Paul. Turned out it was my friend Jess back from Philadelphia. You know, wow. that's like, I from Philadelphia, New York. <laughs> no idea she was out here. No idea that she lived in the same neighborhood, but here we are. Wow. That's so cool. know, I, did, I did run into her randomly at a party last year and I was like, hello? Oh, we should. Wow. So, that's so uh, weird. I, yeah. So I, all I can say is like, um, Oh, Bubble saying hello. <laughs> hello, Bubble. Bubble. Hey, you. But, uh, <laughs> he, he, it's, uh, he, he likes to like join in sometimes. But uh, <laughs> it's like, um, it's just filled, life is filled with such strange, odd circumstance like that. Um, that uh, I, I just take it for what it is. I think, you know, it's pretty damn interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, am yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I just, uh, you know, I feel like I, I, uh, to me, those are, I mean, I don't know if it's true, but it feels like, to me, those are like signposts, like you're heading in the right direction or you're kind of, yeah, you know, you're in the flow or you're doing something right or you're doing something that's good for you when those things happen a lot, it seems like. But, yeah, no, not you know, no. other times I've had, I don't know, it just seems like energy lines up sometimes because other times I feel that I have been on the correct path but i don't get the synchronicities and it's almost mm. like it's there's a time for them and there's a time to not have them and it's like you know maybe it's like when you're just there's these work periods mm. where it's all about yeah, nose to the grindstone you got to get a bunch yeah, of shit yeah. done for six months or whatever you're not going to have any of this you know crazy magic stuff happen because this is about working right now or yeah this it's is about, about like getting you know what from I'm point a to point b and getting the next level right. And, and um yeah it's like the ball's in your court sir you're right yeah yeah um, <laughs> you want the magic you got to do some work now for yeah yeah i keep, keep like <laughs> grinding away at that, that like, you'll see you'll see the wisdom of this yeah so um, <clears throat> that's pretty so pretty, pretty cool though so 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 what's the the situation now you're you're are you you're moving and then try, yeah I've trying to, to stay in the neighborhood i like to yeah because it's uh, like i said it, it's a really lovely neighborhood and um I'll see what goes down. I've got I've got about a month to figure things out. So okay. and everyone's been super supportive about like uh, um you know just looking around and seeing what's available. So um, I'll ask my friend too. Oh, oh my yeah, I have a friend of mine. Who... So we've been. Um, let's darn these things. I would say um, everyone's hitting me about the same time here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. It's, it's, so I thought it's so it's sort of. I've never felt more optimistic hmm. uh, in, in so many ways because so many good things are happening. Good. But still, life's tumultuous and chaotic right now, too. Right. So, um, well, that's when all the, that's, that, that's when all the, that's, you know, that's the birth of creation is chaos, you know? So it's like, this is when, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is when yeah, the stuff it. happens, that's you know, the big change. I'm really inspired. I think that's the thing. Is also, <laughs> Yeah, this is the first time in a long time where I've had almost none of my belongings. Everything I have is still in storage in Studio City. Mm. So I've got the bare minimum of what I needed just to do the work. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And so it's just my sketchbooks, uh, that, that big fucking collage book, and, uh, and everything else that I'm, being, I'm doing on computer. Wow. So um, something about being able to focus in on things and all, the, all these distractions and things. That right. Right. I'm off, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm, oh, that's the one thing that happened to me during the pandemic. So I, I, I love the game Bioshock. I got the collection of the three games and I just played them obsessively. Mm -hmm. I can't even say how many times I've been to each game because it's like, how many times do you listen to your favorite song? Right. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like, oh, here I am at this point again. Oh, girl, oh. <laughs> but, um, but I don't have that distraction now. So it's helped me kind of like just say, okay, well, what have we got to do? And so it's just been drawing you know, drawing, gluing, painting. And I, I love that, and um, and like like I mentioned before, when Travis and I were talking about the fact that um, that I really want to move the larger wall, almost wall size pieces. I don't know how I'm going to do them, but I'll. Um, it's the kind of thing I just want to create my own environment, so to speak. And, yeah. And well, you know, I've I've always I've I've uh, uh, mentioned it to you many times. I want to see your stuff big and in a gallery mm -hmm. setting on the walls. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I want to see. But yeah, yeah, precisely. That's just and, me. Uh, oh, that's just me. No, and, and, and and upon your recommendation, yes, I do have a Patreon now. It's uh, Aquarium of Night Terrors. Oh, you do? Yeah, oh, yeah. You should have told me. I'll join it. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I, I completely spaced on it, but it's uh, <laughs> something I actually started. Got it up and running. 
um, a few months ago, but it just like, you know, stuff came up and, you know, and it just uh, remained moribund for a long time. And so there was a bit of a peak and then things kind of trailed off for a while. And I thought, oh boy, I better start like uh, jump starting this thing again, just to get, get it, um, get, some, put, get some eyeballs on it. So slowly been coming back to life with a zombie. Okay. And, um, I'm going to join it. Oh, thanks. Lance. I'm going to join it, it right so. now. Oh, okay. On live. On it, well, it's this is not live, but uh, yeah, we're uh, as, as live as you can get uh, in this frozen moment in time. In the okay, future. I just joined it. Okay, oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool, it's awesome. I, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, trying to, you know. I'm trying to get as many things up there as possible. So, yes, yeah, so it's another thing to you know, like, again, perhaps I always talk about it's such a hustle sometimes because you got to maintain, and you know, obviously, yeah, yeah, there's so much you got to maintain. <laughs> there's a lot, just basic life stuff you got to do, but yeah, you, you know, just like um, just promotion and selling stuff and shipping stuff and you know, actually doing the things. Is it's a whole it's a whole thing, and I just try again. I just try not to let it. Yeah, but I think this, I, I you, know, this is it. That's it. Okay. I believe, yes, that's okay. It. And another thing too, it's like a, of um, a meditating has really helped too. I, I oh, don't good. Do enough of it as I should, but it. Oh my god, it, it's helped me so much in regards to getting stepping outside of myself. Oh yeah, it's, it's able, yeah, it's more it's more like things. it's replaced my. Uh, psychedelic use honestly i haven't done I think, it, I honestly, haven't done a, it in yeah, years yeah. now and it's because i th feel like it's because i uh started a regular meditation practice that's that's, beautiful. that's fantastic beautiful uh because i think that's uh, kind of where i need to go because i kept thinking during during the, the lockdown and all stuff where you know i got a little indulgent i thought oh, what the fuck are you doing dude all right <laughs> and this is just a wank at this point yeah yeah that's what uh, that was no... the message after i have my my big uh, summer of 87 <laughs> of tripping like every weekend uh and having all this you know sometimes more than every weekend but having all this like <laughs> knowledge gained and spiritual awakening and at the very end of it it's like it wasn't really having the same effect on me and the only message i kept getting was you got to do this on your own now you got to start you got to make yeah, yeah you got to oh, yeah. get there on your own and it yeah, took me yeah. fucking 30 years before <laughs> i mean i i did it but always sporadically it took me literally 30 years to where i like did it got into the habit of doing it every day and started getting those synapses connecting to where i felt like oh you need to meditate every day because it's part of your routine you know it's like i would always do it yeah, for maybe yeah. six months or a couple months or a week and then i would stop and i do it another week or i just do it a day here and there and i finally mm -hmm. got to that point where it's like okay i gotta just commit to this something about i don't know where i'm at in my life maybe i guess i was able to do it but um, now, yeah, now it feels like when I miss a day, it feels awkward and weird. So yeah, it does. I feel I feel the anxiety start to creep in. Yeah, a yeah. Because uh, um, um, I guess for people who don't know, uh, the one benefit that at least I've got from it is you get that. Um, I can only describe it as sort of a hum. There's this kind of like uh, when when you're completely concentrating your thoughts and your focus into your work and all that. There's this kind of a, there's a sense of like everything like. A, it's like it's almost like an engine going uh -huh. <laughs> and all and all the synapses are firing and all the images are coming and and again it's completely you're completely you know in your own element there's no exterior you know thing that you've had to like you know bring into your body and make this happen uh, and you're just uh you're, you're self-generating right sense. and that's um and that's a huge attainment and then it's just like wish i could do it more often but yeah uh, yeah well you know you you're in a it sounds like you're in a like you're in a chaotic situation right now. Like I haven't, I've been really sporadic in the last couple of weeks because I've got my, uh, uh, this is the big time of the year where I sell stuff. So it's like really crazy right now yeah. for me yeah. with the yeah. online business and stuff. So, um, but I, I, you know, I, I know I'll get back to the regular practice. Uh, I mean, I, it's like, I keep doing it when I can, but then it's like, I'll take a few days off or I'll take a week and I'm like, Oh man, I really got to do it. It starts to really bug me, you know. <laughs> know. Um, yeah, I've been a bit more diligent last uh, last week or so. So you're um uh why you what happened with your your why did you move twice? Um well just like I'll just say that life happened, you know. Yeah, um, it's just one thing where I, I felt like this year was a very slim year, and um as far as work was concerned and all that, I, I can sort of feel it kind of like fraying apart at the you know, you know the seams and all that stuff. Mm. And stuff. Like, I guess, guess it's the year it comes apart. I thought 
maybe this could work and it was just one of those things where um they're like, like no you're done so um so that was the end and i, I kind of figured well maybe this, this is the time for the end of this chapter and so it felt right right and, um, yeah, yeah what, so, what were you doing for work were you doing uh, FX stuff oh, still yeah, yeah. Oh yeah! Oh, that's another big thing. Yeah, I was gonna, it was, I was sort of freelancing, doing a couple of things uh, here and then. I was kind of doing some ZBrush work uh, for a company called Tweeterhead, which was uh, again it was my first big job. I was doing this Gilman uh, statue. Mm. Someone else had built up the basic body of it, but um, they had me come in and do my do my detailing on the top of it. Mm. So it was my first kind of thing. I looked at it and saw it printed out, and then yeah, that's <laughs> what I did. And then and again, it was abstractions. I just saw it on a screen. Right. All the all the, you know, all the patterns and things on it, and sculpting and refining certain areas on it, and and there it is as this object in space. And so that was pretty extraordinary. And um, well, actually, the other, um, well, a couple of things, but one one of the big things you can never tell what's going to be a cultural phenomenon when you work on it at all. And this thing certainly did. Is I like worked on the Heidi Klum worm costume. Design. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it's uh, my friend Mike Marino. Yes. You know? Yeah, and uh, I was he, I got I was offered to paint that. Oh my god. And okay. I couldn't do oh. it. You know. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that was funny. So it cool. turned out a couple of people I knew did end up working on that uh, uh um Casey Love and uh Noah Rivers and uh, you know Noah's someone you should get in the show too. He's oh, a, yeah? um, new new to LA genius level sculptor. Oh, okay, uh, cool. Monster guy. What's his name? Uh, Noah Rivers. Uh, and the thing is, it, it, he's extraordinary because he's a, he's essentially he's, he's very young, and he's got that enthusiasm uh, uh, that, is, <laughs> that we used to have anymore. You mean you're one of the most effects guys these days, and it's like. Mm. <laughs> so it's so inspiring to see someone where it's all new, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Open, you, you can keep nurturing right, without right. <laughs> becoming becoming like the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> bitter, bitter old asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll look him up. That's cool. So you, yeah, so, yeah. so you were doing like uh, uh, sculpting stuff still for effects and just. Um, you haven't sculpted any for oh, actually. Well, that uh, uh, scratch that actually was doing. That was last year. Actually, I was working on um, uh, things for uh, um, the Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet Curiosities episode. Oh, review. cool. Uh, that uh, Panos Cosmatos directed, and best time I had sculpting anything in years because again, it was back to big one to one scale creature things. And I uh, was working with um, uh, Aki Akihito, mm -hmm. and uh, so we were jamming on this kind of this. Uh, they call I guess in the, they, they call it the Blob Man. It's, it's, what it's what episode one. is this? What what? It's uh, the viewing. It's uh, uh, the one with uh, Peter Weller. Oh, this is the one with the 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 uh, corpse. Oh no! This is the one with there's a big meteor, and it splits open in this huge orange gelatinous. Oh, I don't think I've seen that one yet. I don't think oh, I've oh, you got it. Okay, it's, yeah, yeah. I keep hearing people talking about the, the view. Yeah, uh, and it's the kind of thing that I was watching, and really, and it's a really well done episode, and it's it's kind of a bonus because it's like I'm really getting into this. Oh, that's right, we worked and stuff. And <laughs> oh. How often does that happen? I, it never, never happened. <laughs> it's always like, oh, there's my ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get a credit, uh, you, know, you know, but no, it, it, it stuff looks great in the, in the episode and got a nice, fat, juicy name credit at the end. So Excellent. It's a win win. Uh, no, it was it was it was it was a really it was a really beautiful experience watching that. And uh, also, like during, during the time I was working on that, uh, we got to meet I got to meet Peter Weller for a moment. Oh, cool! The shop, and generally speaking, the being the talent through the shop, you, you basically don't exist to anyone until someone introduces you, right? And she was so respectful. He was cool. He was just, he literally came up to me. I was like, so Paul, uh, yeah, where'd you go to learn how to do this kind of thing? And so oh, we were able cool. to chat a little bit. And I was like, I can't believe this is happening. This is insane. <laughs> I had that you know? experience <laughs> with, uh, I mean, I've had that experience with lots of actors coming in, actors, actresses coming in. But um, the one that kind of blew my mind was Tom Cruise came in. Yeah. Oh. When, when we were doing Mountains imagine. of Madness, when we were, we yeah. were doing, wow. yeah. And, he came in, I think it was on a weekend. There was like nobody in the shop and just like a couple of us. He was like super, you know, I had this, I thought he was going to be like a crazy person from all the, you know, him, <laughs> you seeing him jump up and down on the couch on Oprah well, back, Oprah's back couch. in the day <laughs> and um, all the memes that came out of that. And he was like that. He was super cool. Very nice. Oh, like yeah, engaged you awesome. and looked you in the eye and didn't seem, you know, he's like, Tom, my name, I'm Tom. Like he wasn't pretentious at all. It was like, wow, that's really cool. 
You know? Yeah, the only Peter Weller, yeah, a good human being is a good human being. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, Peter Well is great. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so uh, what's the what? What else has been going on? So, so it sounds like you're you're in this flux period. Do you have any like? work lined up or are you just kind of like um yeah yeah we're, I, I think, uh, still doing some uh, tweeter head work right now there's some uh, um you know some i think there's get some z brush work you're able to do that stuff from home oh uh, yeah yeah so basically i'm kind of working remotely so i can pretty much work on that for, uh, wherever that's great uh, yeah designer con was this last week and, uh, and unfortunately i couldn't make it to that but yeah. I had a couple of things to view um, that I work on there too, including these um, these um, rather oh. spiny figures. Yeah. yeah. And um, oh, here's something that's pretty cool. This is uh, from my friend Mark Nagata of Max Toy. This is uh, my first vinyl, posable vinyl figure. Oh, nice. Yeah. Toy. And glows in the dark. That's for so cool. Figures. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, basically it was um, something that came up a little while ago. And I confess it was uh, pre pandemic and uh, <laughs> things got stalled a little bit. But uh, basically, he wrote me saying, uh, "Hey, uh, you know, really did your work, and I'd love to see uh, a figure um, that uh, it, it's it's this kind of like fictional TV show he created called Captain Max, and the um, the, um, the villain of, of the of this um, of the story is this thing called Alien Zam, and he's kind of like kind of metal and a mutant like. He's got this big brain, mm -hmm. lots of claws, and a big cyclopean eye." Kind of thing so he's like sort of half like uh metal and a mutant half kind of like japanese tokusatsu ultraman kind of stuff and he wanted me to do my version of that design it and sculpt it so i was like hell yeah i mean that's kind of like a big part of my childhood was like going to uh, what was it there was some japanese mall in san francisco i believe and again it's just a pile of these vinyl figures and things all bagged with these beautiful right. cards and things and now i've got well, I've worked on something where it's bagged and has a beautiful header card on it, and <laughs> uh, and and my artwork's uh, uh, shown in the back with some of the sketches I did for it. So, and again, oh, that's it, cool, man! I get a very rewarding kind of experience. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, it another cool. cosmic thing, another yeah, cosmic yeah, yeah. signpost, you know. So I, I guess it's everything's kind of on on, on this kind of precipice right now because the, the book's about to come out. Um, it's the holidays, so work is kind of stalled right, right. now. Uh, until things uh, um, um, resume at whatever point they do that. So um, uh, it's uh, a little bit of both. It's, a, it's a, one level I'm extremely optimistic and hopeful, and another, um, and another whole other level I'm like, what the fuck? But that's that's kind of way life goes sometimes. Yeah. Well, if I was like, you know, it'd be so amazing if you if to be if I was a billionaire like Elon Musk, I wouldn't buy Twitter. I would be like, Paul, what do you want to do? What do you want to make? I'm just gonna give you the money to make whatever you think would be the coolest thing to make. Oh my god! Can you imagine? Yeah, it would be so fun to be able to do that for someone, or have someone do that for you too. I mean, that would be like that's kind of like uh, uh, uh what's his name? Paul McCarthy, you know, Paul McCarthy, that yes, he, yes. that's how he, that's, you know, he's got, from my understanding, he was funded by these kind of Russian billionaires back oh. when I was working there for a little bit. I worked there like a year, some collector, some new, new money, Russian collector, just do whatever you want, <laughs> you know, do whatever yeah. you want. It's and here's a be in. It's bunch of money, you know, yeah. it's like, could you imagine <laughs> Like, oh my god we're sitting um, it's like we sit and we're like <laughs> scraping by to try and make this amazing shit you know it's just like it's just like so absurd you know <laughs> no. <laughs> i was talking to my friend uh do you, I, I don't know if you know the artist dan will let he's a uh, oh yeah unbelievable, what unbelievable i haven't work. i haven't heard about him in years he was yeah like, he's uh he's a friend of mine and uh, i've seen him quite frequently this year because he comes to visit he's a new so york guy right uh yeah he's in yeah i'm not sure his, his exact location i think he's in the lord for some place so i'm probably wrong about that but uh he was in new york for a little while okay um, and um he's, he's currently living you know in the United states someplace but uh yeah he'll come down every once in um, every other month or so and and uh we'll get together because he's usually doing some production design work or something uh but yeah we were just talking the other um this last friday in fact about like a time when things were really good for him he was just saying that uh, out of the blue, decided to do some drawing. You know, he hadn't really done it before, and he just did this one thing. And 
uh, and I think the exact circumstance, but someone saw that work he did and said, hey, I know someone, you know, uptown who would pay very well for this kind of stuff and got him in touch. And this guy, uh, whoever we met, was just throwing money at him, saying, I love oh, what you wow. do. I'm just going to keep on, you know, throwing another couple of thousand your direction and just keep on making making cool stuff. Wow. And there was even a point where he did one of his favorite pieces and he was like, hey, and the guy was like, mm, no, nah, don't like it. Sorry, don't like it. Here, here's a couple more thousand dollars. Keep doing more stuff. <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> wow, amazing. amazing. That didn't last long. It didn't last forever. Yeah, but it was, yeah. It was, it was, it said it was a very nice period. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's always that possibility. Yeah, mm. you never know. You never know. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people in the world nowadays. Oh, Anything yeah. oh, can yeah, happen. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Another uh, artist I, I reconnected with uh, out of the blue. Uh, do you know Al Columbia's work? He's a comic artist. I know the name, but oh I don't. Oh my god! Um, yeah, he's someone that would be. I think would be very good for the show. In fact, uh, cool. he's a. Uh, if you think about like a certain very demented kind of dark art, uh, he's some of the darkest because his stuff is almost disarmingly. Uh, you look at it, and it's like almost like 1930s, 1920s cartoon style in a sense, but there's all this really you know, kind of <laughs> super violent, creepy uh, stuff going on there. And I met him years and years ago. I was in Northampton back when um, uh, uh, the Tundra Publishing uh, Studio still existed, Kevin Eastman's uh, uh, publishing house. And um, I met him. And it's uh, so, you know, at the same time, I met two artists who I didn't who I didn't know very well at the time who would become two of my favorite artists. That was like one was Al Columbia, and the other was Jim Woodring, who I, I just oh my god, he's another one of these grand geniuses of the world. Um, and again, it was just kind of like, yeah, well, these these guys are cool. And then, you know, they gave me samples of their, you know, you know, a couple of um, their comics and things. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, this and is great stuff. You know? later, but yeah, he appeared like, but the Al, uh, he dropped out of everyone off everyone's radar for oh, better part of a decade or something. Wow. And then because uh, him and, and me and Dan, uh, Dan Willett, were like, going, we're going, oh my god, the guy's so brilliant. But what the fuck happened? And then he reappeared on Instagram a little while ago, and I, I think his account got like mine did earlier. That was another thing that happened. My my, my Instagram got hacked. Oh shit! The new one, uh, but yeah, the first one's out there like a ghost ship. But then I think Al's, uh, I think his account got hacked. It froze at a certain point. I got a very suspicious message from him one time. Like that's not him. Oh my god! Uh, but then I did get a message from Al going, "Hey, Paul, it's been a few years," and it turns out yes, it was indeed him. So, but oh my god, hey, I remember. I still have a drawing he did in my sketchbook way back in the early 90s. Wow. I was like, hey, remember this thing? I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's this weird kid with, like, multiple legs standing over a squashed worm. He's going, hey, it's a dead thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. Just cool. Absolutely, absolutely incredible. So, again, it's one of those weird life things where I was like, I, I – Despite the struggles and all the um, all the all the grim realities you got to deal with, uh, it's pretty tasty and cool underneath all that stuff. Yeah, this uh, is great. I have seen his stuff. He's amazing. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. He's on. I think it's like I think the um, the name for his Instagram is like Orange Sunshine or something like that. Have so, you have, you haven't done a comic book? Have you? I've never actually done a, a full comic book. I, it's, 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 again, in the realm of things that I would love to do. Given half the chance, that's that's um, one of them. In fact, I'd say like the the, the big uh, fucking sketchbook. It's kind of like an oblique comic book. Right. Fact, there's no real story. There's no real. Doesn't really end. It's like naked lunch. It's like this. It's the it's the hammer of the imagination. It's the stuff that like I just like vomited up all this like crap all over it. But there's a narrative kind of weaving through it. No mm -hmm. way. And the characters. Oh, there's that person again. There's that character. Right. So there's some consistency in there, but there's just there's no structure to it at all. But you uh, know what would be interesting would be what if you did what if you took a sketchbook and you know the cut up method right of uh yeah oh yeah, yeah yeah what if you took a sketchbook and then like you know photocopied everything or whatever took mm -hmm. pictures of them scanned it and then cut out different pictures and then arranged it to make a linear story oh my god yeah that would be no, it. That, that, that was something I was considering. That would be a really fun thing to do. It seems yeah, like. Yeah, because I, I always love randomness. I've always loved, I never can sit down there. And, this, this is the story. I've always like kind of fucked up surprises and things. Yeah, yeah. It's something that I've done with friends and I've done with um, my brother specifically. We just we used to do jam comics because my brother, he's, he's an unbelievable illustrator too. Mm -hmm, which yeah. He just oh, did yeah, like, yeah, uh, definitely. He just did like two books. Uh, one was called The Necronom Nom Nom. He illustrated illustrations for an ISP Lovecraft 
cookbook, uh, recipe book. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> he did one, um, he did illustrations for one about Lovecraftian drink mixes and things recently. That's great. And, um, and he's been doing the Lovecraft circuit, sort of doing the convention and all that stuff. But we, what we used to do, we used to do like uh, what either me or him would start a comic, just draw a panel, mm -hmm. a scenario. Then we hand it back and forth. He, uh, I, me or him would draw the next panel. And we go back and forth till kind of a momentum was started. And then we just give it to a random friend and say, you do this. That's so cool. And even, it didn't matter if they drew or you know, if they couldn't draw. Sometimes it was better if they couldn't draw. Some of them it was the best if we found a stranger in a restaurant someplace. <laughs> and, uh, hey, you want to do this? Like, dude, uh, sure, man. And they draw something so fucked up and so um, troubling <laughs> and abstract. And, and we're like, huh. Mm. Well, uh, okay. And then suddenly that panel changes the entire trajectory of the story we had going. That was very linear. Wow. And now something really fucked up and calamitous is happening now because of all the elements we had to kind of piece together from what this guy drew. <laughs> and, That's great. Um, and I don't know what we're going to do because we've got like a couple stacks of these things. And again, if we ever are able to like scan them all and get them into some kind of order, that, that's a, that's a whole that's for the future at some point. Right. Wow. We deal with this. Sometimes we use the wrong pens and they bleed over time or they fade over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to do some. You'd have to do some cleanup, maybe Photoshop cleanup. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Because I, I just I just hate to see all that go to waste because we're just kind of like, oh, so we got to do something with these. Yeah, yeah. Cartoons and things. No, that's uh, that's something that we've carried on from the beginning. Like her and I, um, my brother and I, we've been uh, we used to just tell stories. We'd like we'd be sitting around in, in the living room in our parents' house, and it's like, just, well, this guy goes here and he meets this character, and the character's head does this thing, and and then we just crack each other up with these uh, <laughs> scenarios and things. And then something, something I kept thinking, why am I not using the stuff in the work that I'm doing? Right, it was so just just bizarre and psychotic and dreamlike. And I'm trying to draw these very linear, fucking, you know, little, very traditional looking things. It's like, no, 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 no. It's got to be, got to be bizarro and crazy. Right. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I guess that's what I've been doing this year. I've been trying to like un unclench from a lot of uh, what, you know, working in the biz, I, I guess, kind of uh, imposes upon you where everything's got to be you know, honed down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think things have got to be, uh, you know, constantly, you know, you know revised and 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 then that could be a little strangling but then that's just the deal of it I was, yeah I was, yeah i was working on a um a one yeah one thing i worked on in the last two this is before uh, yeah, yeah i couldn't talk about it the last time but i worked on um the basic design sculpture for um the the the, the parasite twin from uh the movie malignant um which was um if you know what happened i think i've <laughs> I'm not sure if I've seen Malignant. Oh, yeah, it's a James Wan film with the uh, yeah. There's a well, it's been out for a while, but there's a basically this this murder. These murders have been happening, and no one knows what's happening. It turns out it's actually the parasite twin of the main female character who's got is growing out of the back of her head. Oh wow! That's so there's cool. this. Uh, uh, I this haven't seen that. Stretchy looking thing, and uh, and it's it was a whole process of trying to get this thing to look right because I thought it was like I had some designs to work from someone else had done and was sculpting these things. And um, I'm trying to get this face right. And it was cool because I got to meet James Wan and all that. And uh, we were discussing how this thing could look. But after, after a while, it, it was just so, it was like changes came in every day. And I think, oh, move the eyeball over here. Oh, oh this God, over here. it was one of those. <laughs> yeah, squeeze this in a little bit more. And after all, I'm just a pair of hands here. <laughs> so, yeah, that's I'm, what you, yeah. I look at it and say, yeah, that's kind of what I worked on there. But it basically, you know, I'm just part of the process. Because it yeah. went down, I think, uh, uh, well, yeah, Norm Cabrera ended up doing a lot of the fine final details and the thing for the final animatronic, uh, whether, whether it was animatronic or puppet, but it was... Uh, <laughs> He went, he went through several stages. Right. Like, what was that? Uh, what was James Wan like? Uh, he was cool. Very again, very enthusiastic and uh, you know, very responsible. It was it was it was, um, it was an interesting time because I hadn't worked in. Uh, I guess it's been a while since I've been in a shop. So uh, and then and been a while since I've been at Spectral too. That was another thing as well. So it was um, it was it was an interesting time. So are you kind of out of the shops now, or are you sort of like if they call you, you? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I'm always like I'm always open for it, you know. And I, I guess it's, that's, that's the kind of thing that is, uh, you know, at this point, <clears throat> the work is work, and that's if it's cool work, then I'm all, all, all for it, you know. Yeah. So I guess that's the whole thing. It's a matter of finding that kind of consistent income. Um, right. While I'm working on other things and all that, and that, that's been yeah, that's not really been the case this year. Well, you know, the Patreon, you. 
you know, we need to promote this Patreon for you because that's that can be a really good, consistent way to make money. At yeah, least, at like, least cover the bare minimum, like rent and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If I can get to that point where, yeah. I'm still no, but you no. got it. But you gotta, you know, you gotta really promote it. You gotta really. Yeah, that, that's the thing too. And also, there's no real structure to it yet. I'm just kind of like, hey, pay, pay whatever price. But I haven't, I haven't set the tiers yet. Or hey, you get this if you pay this much, or you get this, or you know. Yeah, it's good that you just set it up <laughs> though, just because you know what I find is like, you know. A lot of people are just just want to support you. They don't even really care what you post in there. I always I always try and make it entertaining, and I just share every whatever mm -hmm. I'm working on art wise. I just post it. So, yeah, that's so um, um, so that's so I so, so there's like it's a cool it's a cool behind the scenes thing, and you get to see everyone my work before anybody else does. But um, but a lot of people don't even check it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even look at it. They're just doing it to be cool, and it's pretty amazing. And I know there's a lot of people out there who would feel that way about you. You know. That, yeah, I think I just have to keep on, um, um, you know, getting it out there. Then you need, you know enough people with you know big internet reach. You know, like myself, and we have oh, tons of friends in common who would promote it. You just gotta like let everybody know. You know, like I'll do it for sure. Yeah, right. And uh, um, I get reach out. Yeah, of course. I'm sure everybody everybody loves you, so it's like everybody would love to help with that and just put spread the word out. Um, Cause yeah, man, it's like you could have your your bills and rent taken care of every month. Yeah, yeah, and it's finding some uh, finding that equilibrium. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. Once you start getting back to your I mean, your own work, and it's such a funny thing. I'm always trying. To, I'm never quite sure what to call it. Yes, I call it my personal work. I'm like, what is the personal work? Sounds so dainty. I'm kind of like, no, it's my shit. I'm just like, my, <laughs> my weird and pissed off shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's you know, it needs it needs to be seen. It's amazing. It's amazing. You're weird and pissed yeah, off. Yeah. No, I kept saying this. It's got to be. This has got to be the start of like just you know really getting a, just reinvesting my time into, into getting this stuff out there, getting it out of my head. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And but but people's lives. Yeah. It's it's right. all it's all about promoting it. It's all about promoting it. You just got to, it's like, that's the thing you got to do to get the stuff self-sustaining to where you're getting paid to do it. Yeah. yeah it's just absolutely. promotion and marketing, mm -hmm. all the shit nobody wants to do. It's like, it sucks, but. Yeah, you know. I, I know. It, it basically not. Yeah. It, that's the fact. Because I found myself, it's just been the last few years. I'm doing, doing things and, 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 and I think to, to be a certain way that I, I couldn't have imagined doing in, in a few, a few years previous, really. So, yeah, I mean, much more. I'm going to be much more of a salesman. I'm going to be much more. Of a, oh yeah, yeah. yeah and again, just really, and, and even with all the stuff I've got to do, just keep on pushing with the uh, with the work. And um, so, you know, you know, people get a sense of the, the visual language of it. Right, right. Yeah, and, yeah. There's a whole, uh, like I said, there's a whole, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a whole vision yeah. there. There's a world there. So, um, yeah, I want to, and I want to see it, and I know a lot of people want to see it. So. So the, the book's coming out like around. It's supposed to ship around before Christmas. Yeah, yeah, around or, Christmas. Then. Yeah, around yeah. Christmas. Because they're in, they're in Portland now. Okay. And uh, it's amazing because I, I I hadn't seen the cover until uh, my friend Venetia uh, sent me a photograph. I'm like, oh yeah, that looks that looks pretty cool. Cover cover, <laughs> cover looks great. Yeah, I'm like, that's, great. Uh, that's way to do it. And uh, I'm I'm sure I'm gonna be like, oh my god, why is that piece in there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is that everything you know and I, you know really she was showing me she was leaping to it i'm like oh that's in there oh my god but <laughs> I, I can't I, at this point i'm just i'm just i'm more concerned that this thing is just it just happens you know so yeah I'm, you just gotta you know you gotta let it go it's like i do yeah, I, I just posted on on uh i don't know i think on twitter a couple of weeks ago was like every single interview i do every interview afterwards i go oh did i say something stupid did i look stupid Oh my god! Did man. I? My hair looks <laughs> stupid, and it's like, I, you just you just gotta post it anyway. It just like yeah, no, I it. Find like you just no gotta do it anyway. You are who you are, and, and not look uh, back and just go on yeah. to the next thing. And I do that once a week. I exactly, week, you, you, know? you just can't edit. 
you know, get, get back and, and, and try to curate your appearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you uh, know, yeah. I, I've occasionally I've edited out a couple of things if I said something exceptionally stupid or something that could be misunderstood, maybe, but almost <laughs> never. Oh, no, I, didn't, that, that, yeah, didn't. I almost never do. I almost never do. So, um, I, but, but it's, it's, it's like an attitude you have to take, uh, an attitude about just your online life it's just like put it yeah, out there and move on you know, I don't know. Just... Uh, that, you know even even if it was a, a year ago yeah i, mean, so I know we, I mean, we can't avoid it but i was like i was gonna not drag this out too much but of course is the uh um the encroaching <laughs> presence of ai generated artwork. oh that's right yes and yes it's, uh, and it's a uh, it's fascinating and terrible it yeah yeah hard. yeah that's the weird thing about it it's, it's... i know because i still you know look back at my first experiments with mid-journey and i i, I had a blast you know because you're coming up with things like what the fuck is this right how, how how would it take these two elements and come up with whatever the fuck is coming up with uh and and you know i'll, I'll always like you know re really enjoy those images and things but yeah yeah the implications and the ramifications of where it could go or where it's going presently it's, it's a little uh, a little unsettling yeah yeah well the the you know the, i just had uh steven zapata on my podcast yeah great interview oh you you, you heard that one? Oh, oh yes yeah and that's <laughs> like you know nice. that's the big the, the how the how the data has gotten is so ethically bad yeah you know? and, that's and really whole, bad um, the whole part where uh we respect the rights of musicians but you visual artists yeah yeah now it's your you. now it's your turn to get screwed <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's like that's a that's a, that's a big ethical concern but yeah it's a weird thing because it's i was just reading some article about just ai in general and just the whole like you know it could cure cancer and it could also study cancer and develop a cancer that is incurable and kill off everybody in the world <laughs> it's like seriously these are the <laughs> We are on the precipice, aren't we? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It, it's man. like, oh, man. I just, you know, as far as the art goes, I, 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 I think some of the some of the stuff, especially the fucked up stuff, is so cool. Like, it's yeah, so I think, yeah, demented. the more demented the stuff gets, I've seen some people produce. I'm like, how the hell did you get that? <laughs> it's like that but stuff. It's, I really it's hysterical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like so weird and cool, and 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 so it's funny because you know you in principle or not. Yeah, I guess in creatively, it's like you're all about it, but then you know you can't ignore the potential scary future it could yeah, possibly yeah, bring right. and, and not to mention all the other stuff we talked about the un unethical practices of the companies and mm -hmm. and all this stuff so it's like it's such a weird double-edged sword um i i i really i you know i hope that that gets settled because i really would yeah. like to use yeah. it to create reference uh, just because i'm lazy and i, I, know, like, I know just for, i don't want to go take a picture of ideas something and yeah and getting ideas for compositions it's like this is cool um yeah i mean i mean i'll show you so, some ways i'm using it starting to find the damn thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah your your ai stuff was cool i was watching that when you yeah, were when I, you were doing that i was just um well i think it's what i found but like like i was just going to be drawing like some of this guy was completely image journey guy. I oh how cool him. i thought he was such a cool character i just redrew him in my style yeah yeah and yeah so it's a weird kind of reappropriation of what like some random things just put together that's yeah that's how i could see using it uh just to like as a creative tool you know as a creative tool it, it seems like it could be really yeah, yeah just for raw inspiration yeah yeah i just yeah. i would ne i don't think i'll ever i mean and i've said this i probably said it on the steven zapata episode i say it all the time but it's like making the stuff is the fun part you know everything that comes from everything is an artifact of the fun part that's the way i look at a final piece it's like an art it's a leftover thing yeah. from the fun that you had making it and that's like i'm doing it for the making it part 100 mm percent. -hmm. i mean i'm doing it i'm trying to sell work too because this is the world i live in and i have to sell stuff to make a living mm -hmm. but um you know the joy is in the creating and so you know the making the physically drawing or physically painting or physically sculpting uh uh 
I mean, even in ZBrush, just making the thing, you know, yeah, using yeah. your mind and problem oh solving. Oh my God, I didn't know I could do this now. Right. Yeah. Or just that it inspiration when something changes and you're like, and you see something weird and you're like, oh, I'm going to elaborate on that. I mean, that's like the magic, uh, fun part of it's, it's, that's the best part. And so uh, I just can't imagine it being satisfying taking that element out. But, yeah, and that's yeah. A, that was a really good, um, I, I just posted on my Facebook, it was like this uh, really good interview with uh, the artist Dave McKean, who had some very good observations on, uh, you know, about AI and, uh, again, you know, kind of implications of this whole thing and all that. And he was just saying, something, ultimately, I mean, and, and, and trying to be as optimistic as he could, is like, um, people are still going to want the human element there, because um, art, it, sure, it, it, it's the, uh, the, the end result is one thing, but people really want to know that there is a way of getting there. That there was a process of like discovery and, mm -hmm. and struggle and, and intent, and I think that was the main thing he was saying. There's an if you see some artist, he likes there's an, there's a great intent in the work, All right? And, it's not, it's, uh, and we should concentrate on the things that uh, AI doesn't do. And 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 uh, you know, I've always think, yeah, we should just lean into our more our quirkier, more idiosyncratic. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. That's something you're just not going to get, really. I mean, I don't know. I mean, could be yeah. <laughs> It get quirky <laughs> in the meantime I, I yeah think, uh, 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 i was gonna i had a, I had a good point let me think uh uh oh oh okay think about like think about an artist that you love like think about giger for yeah. example okay you might love giger imagery if it was created by ai and giger never existed but yeah, but but the way that I feel like as a fan or collector or whatever, the way that the collector from, from a fan standpoint, as a fan myself, what happens is you see it, some work and it resonates with you. You're like, that's amazing. And then you want to find out about the artist. Exactly. And then you learn about the artist and you're like, Oh, he's into cool stuff that I'm into. Or he, he, he has this weird thought about this, or he's done this other stuff. And so it's, not just about the image it's about the image and the artist who created it and yeah, that's that's yeah, part of the equation it's not absolutely. just you know just knowing that he, was, he had a he had a phobia of worms and yeah that, <laughs> yeah, and, that, uh, that, that in, in, all, in a living human body oh. <laughs> <laughs> all of that <laughs> like <Some> mushrooms yeah. <laughs> it all <laughs> enriches the experience of of your appreciation appreciation for absolutely, for the absolutely. artwork you know absolutely. what i mean I mean, I suppose you could say, okay, the modern AI artist is putting the prompts in and you could say, okay, you know, you could put that on the, on the prompt maker who's making the arts. And I'm always and, wondering if that'll become a thing, like, like they'll become like a DJ or something like that. It's like, you know, <laughs> you just got the most respected and feared prompter in all Eastern Europe. Like, yeah. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Know, like, sunglasses and a scarf you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know i feel like you know i was just talking to to gabe leonard about this this morning we were just discussing through text it's like you know i know that my collectors want my original artwork that you know they want stuff for me they're not that's what they want you know and your people that yeah. love your work want stuff from you they don't want a simulation of your work from ai you yeah, know? yeah or if they do it's a different th those are not your collectors if that's what they're into yeah know? yeah exactly if people just want the end result and that's a whole other yeah you know. yeah so i don't know i mean it, it it's it's scary in a lot of ways but it's also like um you know who knows how it's going to affect the landscape uh from my personal perspective i feel like uh uh you know i'm not i don't know i don't feel concerned about it because i feel like i have my niche and people know me and i've been out there for a long time yeah. so you know people want i guess the people that like my stuff want to see what i'm going to do next they don't they're not that interested in like a an ai version of what i do maybe they are i don't know but it seems like who knows it's so huge. It's such yeah. a huge, big thing. It's it's hard to even talk about, really. I know because it just landed. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know, and it's already coming. 
Are, are people nostalgic for Deep Dream and Wombo at this point? <laughs> yeah, people are going to start doing, start, start going to use the old. It's going to be I, I know. cool I, I'm to miss, use. I'm the... missing dogs and birds everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are going to. Yeah, remember, you remember Wombo was the big thing last year around this time. I remember we were all, yep. we were all getting into it. And That's right. Styles and things and. It was kind of cool because there it didn't it didn't have that sinister kind of, <laughs> of like where where this was all coming from. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's uh, who knows what's gonna happen. It's just crazy. <laughs> but I mean, that's the thing. Who knows what's gonna happen about anything? Anything at this point. You, you know, know, that's really the truth. That's the ultimate truth. Is that you can't, especially nowadays, you can't really hang on to anything anymore you know there everything is just changing oh so yeah, yeah. much Every, you know, all my perceptions what life might have been from years past that's obliterated that's yeah like, you know it's a completely different the, the only the only way to to deal with it is uh, you know, accept the chaos and just try and surf the chaos. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's it. a really good way of putting it. <laughs> because kind of how it's felt the last few months. I'm just like, yeah, I'm right. To, yeah. Well, this is blowing up. Let me. Uh... And it's like it, it's almost like you got people that can let go enough to surf the chaos, and then you've got people that are so desperate to hang on to what they know and what is comfortable that they end up going crazy, basically. Yeah, 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 I don't think it's what we're seeing again. This yeah, is a rather gruesome uh, topic, but you know, just politically too, you're seeing a lot of people that are trying to hold on to those. Yeah, this is. I mean, yeah. I really think that this is like this kind of fascism resurgence is coming from people who cannot accept that everything is changing faster than they can yeah, deal with it. Yeah, That's like this a massive time of change. And I think there's, yeah, I think there's a lot of fear that comes out of that. Yeah. Thing. And so what, what do you do when, when you're in the situation where you're afraid you, you get the, you, you want the daddy figure who's very strong. Yeah, it's going to take yeah. care of everything, put it all strong back to man. normal so you can feel better again. It's like, mm. it's, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, it's crazy. What a world, man. <laughs> yeah, oh my god and that's that's one thing i it's, it's, it's definitely be an it's been an interesting thing to observe yeah been, yeah on so many levels in the, in the last uh, uh the land this is the landscape and so yeah yeah i mean yeah, yeah weird i mean again yeah the strange like this weird combinations the way people think these days um yeah and, and a weird and just things you wouldn't expect it's like oh I, I didn't know oh this anime nerd is also kind of saying weird kind of creepy yeah <laughs> things. I'm like, oh. yeah 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 it's like such a weird combination of different personalities and tastes mm -hmm. that you would never think would be interested in this it is yeah it, it's bewildering yeah yeah <laughs> I wanted to watch like a, like a, a video game review or something like that. And it's kind of going on about woke culture and you know, you know fucking. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the yeah, uh, yeah. It's so bizarre. It's so it's just weirder than it's weirder than we could have. It's way weirder than we anyone could have imagined. It's totally oh, fucking. A long shot. <laughs> a fucking long shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, oh man, I saw this great meme. I don't know, like. It was the the you know the uh, the apocalypse we imagined, and it was like a scene from that movie, The Road. Do you know The Road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the great movie. And, oh the, and then the apocalypse we got, and it was I don't remember what the, it was. Some like scene of Elon Musk and Twitter or something. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the lamest apocalypse ever, the weirdest oh apocalypse ever. I don't know, man, but. You know we're here we're here for it it's you know i gotta imagine yeah no, that's all i can say like we, you know like everything else we've talked about in the last uh, half hour or so like we're, we're all uh yeah it's uh it's not going away for a while and... i mean we're here to bear witness to it if nothing else and as artists no, i don't think that's the whole thing but this is fucked up <laughs> <laughs> so it's always good to have people that you can you can rely on so like a gap. <laughs> yeah yeah so you don't feel like you're the only sane person left <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's, the, I, I, I will argue the point that that's why one of the reasons I really feel like as, you know, artists like us are, are the most, uh, uh, like 
appropriate appropriate and prescient kind of artist for the world we live in i believe the people doing the weird dark I, shit I, I because, so, because yeah, that's what dark, is happening yes. right now and yeah. it's been happening for a while and it keeps getting weirder and darker and, yeah and <laughs> so they're just still it is through what we do you know yeah yeah so uh, if we don't really even if we don't really intend it like i, I draw some fucked up thing i'm like yeah i guess that's sort of like how i'm processing it, these, it, the data that's coming in right so, right and then uh a few years later it is it happens in reality and you're like oh damn it <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> i don't know <laughs> if you've had that i've had that happen a couple times where where i've painted something and then it just seemed like why did i like this nazi face painting i did i oh yeah, yeah i had a trip and i probably told you this but i had a trip one time and i saw this nazi face it was called nazi face it just came to me it was said nazi face is the title of the painting and the painting was like a white supremacist guy buzz cut with a big swastika in his face and he was all like and then was like oh that's weird why did i think that and it was before this whole nazi white nationals wave came yeah. it was a couple of years before and i was like that's weird but i'll paint it and you know it didn't come out very good i want to i still i want to go back to it and fix it because it, it was rushed and it was for a show but man I, I really felt like it was you know i was in that weird state of mind where i was sort of tapping into the future unfortunately yeah, that's exactly you what know? I sometimes you know and, yeah, yeah, no, in, in, in kind of a, yeah. And so every time you make something, you got to kind of go like, "What does this mean? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what is this pointing <laughs> to in the future?" <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know, it's like uh, even with the gas masks, you know, it's like it was all the ga Giger was Mister Gas Mask, and I, yeah, you know, yeah, I was painting a lot of gas masks, and then the well, not all and then the whole mask and thing and the pandemic. It's like it really felt like I don't know, man. You look. You, you look at what artists are doing and you could almost kind of, I don't know, maybe connect some dots and get some ideas yeah, about I mean, what's just coming like down that, the pike, that, maybe. Um, just from being hypersensitive, I think, you just like, you know, pick up what's in the air and yeah. you know, brain's busy at work trying to like uh, make sense of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of people, you know, emerge in the imagery that uh, could be prescient, you got to tell them. It's crazy. Well, um, Okay, well, so you have any uh, uh, final words? We want to promote your book. We want to make sure yeah, everybody yeah, buys yeah, that yeah. at paulcomoto.com, right? Or slash yeah, yeah. shop. Yeah, yeah, paulcomoto.com slash shop. And uh, there's uh, you can pre-order the book there. And like I said, that should be landing Christmas 2022. Um, in very, very shortly, I hope. And um, yeah, I'm on some... I guess uh, yeah. I guess I, I um, hopefully we'll be seeing everyone in a in a in a, in a more life supporting environment next time we speak. Yeah, and, maybe you can let me know when you're settled, and we could have you on again to 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 see yeah, where yeah, all of this and see how much more weird, how much weird <laughs> stuff happened within the interviewing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't see that coming. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, Jeez. I want to know. I want I want an update on on the. Uh, the guinea pig for sure because that is the craziest thing man oh my god i know a pitch black guinea pig it is <laughs> a goth guinea pig that you were that you were imagining i wonder if i could ever find a guinea pig and then you find one and it's a I goth seeing black... things on the, on the sidewalk i was walking up and down i was at colorado avenue i think and seeing things like hey is that a guinea pig it's a shoe or it's like a little piece right of <laughs> <laughs> it just all happened at the same day and... Oh, it's incredible it's incredible and it's, it's, and it's become the story and everyone is so invested in the story of this guinea pig now <laughs> you have to get it man pig, you know, where is it what's he doing and uh they think i, I think the name I, I the name i thought i heard was Bellucci. um this, this one a girl at this box and uh she said yeah 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 my neighbor called it Bellucci. Bellucci. I mean, <laughs> it is pretty funny i, I know it's not the blue yeah Bellucci, like monica Bellucci, or like uh or like john Bellucci, which would be right because <laughs> how would this person know but who knows <laughs> oh my god yeah i want to know what happens with that um but but i really feel like you should you need to do whatever you have to to own to to be that owner because because i know you're like the best um guinea pig owner ever i know you treat guessed. your guinea pigs I, really I, well 
I, I never would have imagined that would have been my thing when I got out to LA was like, um, you're going to be Mr. Guinea pig. How did you get, how did you end up getting a guinea pig in the first place? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, it was all came down to my friend, uh, Meredith Giannis, uh, uh, who uh, was friends of friends of mine. At the time. I didn't know her that well at the time. I think I just met her uh, for the first time in 2009. Yeah. And I don't know how everyone knew. Uh, I think as I, I, I started drawing cute things or making reference to things and, uh, my friend Nadia called me up and said, uh, who's friend with me, who was working, they were working together on this magazine called Coil House. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. No yeah. Coil and uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's cool. Yeah. I just met up with Nadia the other, um, just last week, in fact, here. And so we were reminiscing. But the whole thing was, um, she called me up and Paul, would you like a guinea pig? I'm like, um, I, sure. I just moved here. I don't have a cent to my name. Uh, I'll let's see it anyway. So we uh, both went up to Oakland and um, from, from uh no it was in woodland hills at the time saw this guinea pig fell in love with it. his name was ingmar ingmar superstar <laughs> and um he's this adorable little thing you know that i thought oh my god I, I i feel so responsible i just took care of bugs and things this is you know if something terrible is going to happen i won't feed it i'll neglect right. it I'll, I'll i'll walk in he'll be like you know his, his legs will be in the air all stiff and then I also put him in a jar like, of alcohol or formaldehyde, like like my bugs, and he'll be Ingmar in a jar. I don't want Ingmar in a jar. <laughs> and a um, couple of you know, as soon as I got him home, you know, I saw this little, those big brown eyes and a little brown face, and they start squeaking at me, and went right down to Ralph's uh, or, or wherever the hell it was going, and got a big bundle of you know greens and things, began feeding him regularly, and. And he was thriving. And a couple of months later, there he was squeaking at me. And I said, oh, Ingmar, you're not in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, you know, I would, I've never had a guinea pig. I never had a guinea pig in my life. Yeah, there, there, it's, it started for me a long time ago. I was like, I was, um, you know, you we know, doing this grade school sleepovers. And a friend of mine had this whole pen full of baby guinea pigs. They're, they're, wow. they're all white. And and it made this little burbling, percolating, bubbly sounds, and that was enduring. And then they start squeaking. They call it weaking. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, and it's that sound. And <laughs> oh, oh that, that's that's ridiculously cute. <laughs> and then that kind of I don't know if, uh, how much influence I had, but um, then our family got guinea pigs for a while, and they were spectacular. And that was really, that was that was grade school. That was like you know, I was in what wow. sixth grade, fifth grade, maybe sixth grade. And it was only until all the way up when we had dogs, we had all kinds of things. But um, this wasn't until 2008, 2009. It began going, something in me was saying, Paul, you, you need to find a guinea pig. Because I remember it was uh, <laughs> I hang out with my friend John John Jesse, Jesse in, in New York. He's, he's another amazing, amazing artist. Yeah, he is. Uh, but uh, we were just going, you we were just hanging out. Uh, we were doing lots of hanging out uh, during those days when we went to a pet store. And there's a lot of baby guinea pig. Again, it was a uh, pitch black for the most part, but I had a white mohawk kind of mm -hmm. thing. And it was so cute. And it was, like, it was back in the time when guinea pigs, they start off as little mini potatoes and they've got long legs. You actually see their legs. Uh -huh. They reach full potato hood. <laughs> and uh, John John's like, oh, you know, you know, that's that's the one you got to get, right? He says, he says, dude, I got like a, I got like a cage. I got like a, a, a water bottle and some bedding. I got set you up. And at the time I was in New York, I was like, oh man, I just, I just can't take care of a mammal right now. <laughs> um, so it was, it was a deferred kind of thing you know? right. I did plant the seed in my head and um, it wasn't until a good few years later because I went to all of Philly four years in Philly and then finally landed in LA and suddenly here's this guinea pig and it's been this uh, thing ongoing thing since that point how and, long uh, how long do they live not very long that's the one thing that's the one thing I have to sort of accept I, that's my thing. fear it's a pang of impermanence where you think Oh, this is the most adorable thing in the world. It's so cuddly and lovable and all that. And I got like what? Uh, it's like a replicant or something. I've got like, <laughs> not that short, but it's like uh, I've got maybe five, six years. Of, uh, five, uh, that's seven. a little better than I thought. Yeah, yeah, uh, seven years at most. I thought I had more time with uh, with Impy, my the last one for this one. Uh, and unfortunately, yeah. I lost two of them during 2020, and that that was really just yeah. I've I've been through some um, some really 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 sad uh, experiences with them, and uh, and even when this happened, I was kind of like, well, it's just the way it goes. Right. In fact, uh, this this kind of ties into an interesting thing. I just watched uh, uh, the uh, Duncan Trussell's Midnight Gospel, the episode with his mother. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful episode which she talks about her mortality and her acceptance of death. So that was really you know, you know reverberating through my head. 
at the time. And then when Nippy fell sick and I just sort of wind down, that it, it was like, I sort of accepted it. I was like, you know what? Right. It's just part of the cycle. And yeah. I'll just pet her and say, hey, look, you're going to be, going to be meeting my other guinea pigs soon. Yeah. Uh, it's sad. And so it was, uh, yeah, you know, I had maybe one minute of ugly crying, but by and large, I, 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 I was able to, uh, I, I, I was able to acquit myself okay in the situation. Yeah. Well, yes. I, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, I really want to get some rats because I used to have, I a, hear they're delightful pets. Yes. Cause I, I wound up, it was, was it, I don't even remember when it was three years, four years ago. Five, I don't even remember, but I somehow wound up, wound up with two mice that were like feeder mice for a, a snake and they were, oh yeah, yeah. and they were two brothers and um uh i got granddaughters now and they were little and so they were like they wanted these my my uh, uh wife bought them the mice and i ended up having to take care of them of course because someone had to and <laughs> as they they're really cute they're little mice but they like you know they're weren't they're not great pets they like pissed on you and shit on you yeah. constantly and, oh, yeah. and and that's like okay i can deal with that i love animals but they started there were males and what i found out is that you're not supposed to have males together because they will kill each other so as they oh, started growing wow. up they just were after each other oh, shit, that's like rough. like causing scratches and they were tearing each other apart oh. and trying to dominate each other and they're so cute and i, <laughs> I ended up having to take separate the two and put them both in their own cages and then they're alone and i just felt like oh god the i just don't feel like i just didn't feel like they were they had a great life really you know and they and and so i took you know i took care of them and stuff but they lived a couple of years and then they died and that was a bummer and i'm just like do i want do i want that again to, you yeah. know cuz i but i really but I had a rat when I was a kid and he was so cool, so friendly oh, and you could pet him and he was just like such a cool animal. But I think they only live a couple of years also. So I don't know. Wow. I don't know. But guinea pigs, I thought about it. I, I thought about guinea pigs when I saw you posting your guinea pigs. And then I saw when he got sick and then I was like, I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> it's yeah, hard. I went there. there was a rough period. Yeah. Yeah. Period. I, got, I had one named Sparky, and it was this perfect little thing. I had gotten him for a, not gotten her for a companion for for Impy. Perfect little thing. It was like sort of little yellow, gray, white little thing, and so adorable. And and uh, I had about a month with her, and I thought this is a dream because they loved each other and they were always smushed together. And uh, I see their faces in the dark, and they're looking back at me, and they were kind of like, and and Sparky would use Impy's butt as a pillow, and you know, mm -hmm. he would like. <laughs> Lick Sparky in the face, kind of grooming her and all that stuff, and and it was just this is so perfect. And then Sparky fell ill, and yeah. it, was, it was really quick, and I was a wreck. Yeah. After that. Um, so it's so it's, hard. It's just the risk you take. This is the kind of thing you have to accept. This could happen. You know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, just, it did tell me so. I remember just kind of like, again, it was, it was literally a day where I was just I was just destroyed and just sobbing and and. And it's something that it, it did occur to me. I was sort of a revelation, I suppose. I was standing there going, you know, this is this is a teachable moment, I think, because it's teaching me that yes, grief is it's harrowing, it's it's devastating, but it's part of life. It's part of yeah. the cycle of life. And and just then me going through this now is something that I just have to do, and we all have to do. Yep. And so, as opposed to say uh, uh, another thing I've been struggling with was depression, then because I've it's been better lately, but I've been to some gruesome, grueling uh, scenarios in the last. Oh, years. really? Yeah, and and but it, it taught me that uh, well, that's it's different than that because I was just I used to think those would be the same if I uh, if something really sad or really uh, uh, emotionally devastating happened that it would fall that it, it would be depressing as well, and it would be one and the same, and it would be this gruesome hell. But this time, you know, these are these are different because the mm. one was very again. It was it was it was just the cycle of life, and you know, I was just kind of like going going through it, and there's kind of a poetry to it, if I can right? Think that way, and depression is something that it absolutely deforms and distorts your entire perceptions of reality. Oh, interesting. Where things are so ugly and so horrible and so hellish 
uh, that uh, you know that's it's just it's, it's something that I'll think okay good so that's something I can right do. yeah but that's something irrational and terrible and interesting uh, so I so I so I tend not to be so fearful of like you know you know, you know tragedy and things right things that are inevitable right right that's interesting yeah that's how I've always heard de- depression described really uh, it's kind of distorting your it's why you can't get oh, through yeah. to you can't get through to someone who's experiencing a serious oh God, clinical yeah, depression. You can't just like make them actually. feel better because uh, you know it just it, they won't you know it, they can't do it. They can't just yeah yeah yeah. You're, you're completely removed from any, any kind of re- real human response to what, what you're going through. Yeah, it's got to be horrible. Yeah, yeah. No, I, so, you know, I've been through it, and I've been in situations where I was uh, on, on, on a job someplace, and it would hit me. And, oh no, really? You know, and only a few people, and and a few people did manage to have the, just found the right words to get me through it. And, wow! And, uh, and I really held on to this after a while. Wow! It wasn't much. It was just like a, um, a couple, a couple of well, well chosen words, and it helped me kind of crawl, crawl out of that. Right. And, mm. Well, you seem pretty good now. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> no, my, my head's in a good space good. Just, despite everything that's uh happening around us right now <laughs> um i've never i've never felt more uh focused on things that's so, excellent well we got you know we have each other we have the community and uh we all support that's each been, other that's been the best thing i think uh because being in touch with everyone with you and with everyone else uh and you know just through the miracle the miracle of zoom Yep. It's, uh, it's it's done it's it's been a profound sense of uh, connectivity uh whereas uh maybe a few years before i, I just did not have that you know, you're, right you know, a few times because the one thing that blindsides people me specifically since i don't drive is uh once you get out to la you think hey it's gonna be a party out here hey Philly yeah. was great new york was uh, <laughs> like uh you know rock and roll you know uh fantasy and then you come out here and you think it's going to be twice as much. And it's like the isolation is profound. It's so big and spread out. It's not so the same as everyone, New York. No one really wants to travel. Yeah. Because when you know, it's reduced to buzzy little voices on the end of a phone line or something. Yeah. So yeah. That, that was, uh, yeah, that, that was, that was a um, bit of a, bit of a, <laughs> oh, this is the way it is. <laughs> so I to adjust a bit. But like, but that's the one, again, we were talking silver linings in the pandemic. And um, that was one of them, the fact that everyone really, really made an extra effort to reach out to each other. Right. And, um, and, uh, and just keep each other sane while we try to continue with the work. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, we'll see how it all goes. I'm, I'm still uh, somehow, I don't know. I'm somehow still hopeful. I don't know why. I probably should. Yeah, no, I've, I've got like this unflagging optimism. Yeah, it's like, exactly. enough, it's, it's, it's like as grim as things get. Yeah. I, I keep <laughs> saying, whenever I go off on like uh, social media, I say, so please, don't, please don't say this is doomy. I'm just making observations. So right, right. Same here. Part of me Same here. Like the, reason, the reason I can say these things is because there is a right. Part of me that's, uh, yeah, and you oh. forget that everyone else doesn't feel that way. Some people are like hanging by a thread, and you say something oh, like know. that, and then, <laughs> so oh, dude, uh, you, know, like, you too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I think, uh, I think it's a good thing. I mean, what else are you gonna do? You're gonna, you know, you try and deal, like you said, surf the chaos, try and be positive about it, or what? What's the alternative? You know, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like there's not really any alternative. Um, I think, uh, yeah, um, maybe even you said. I remember we were, like, this whole idea that we were, we were kind of like, in a sense, we we're like the best prepared people for this kind of scenario. Yeah, right. <laughs> we we're always deep, you know, those dipped in weirdness all the time in preparation for <laughs> yeah. the weirdest constantly, case yeah, constantly confronting death all the time, so and like, thinking oh, about these things. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Thinking about worst case scenarios all the time, yeah, yeah, watching movies actually... about all this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so funny. Yeah, it's interesting. Risk well, for the mill. Yep. <laughs> oh, just on side thank you for turning me on to Jason's podcast too. It's become one of my favorites. Oh, good. Yeah, he's yeah, no, some... He's got some, uh, yeah, he's got had some uh, great guests on. You know, I found um, Mitch Horowitz. I don't know if you've heard Mitch Horowitz. Yeah, I know they're, they're fascinating interviews. Yeah, he's he's great. Love, love he, uh, oh, you, did you hear the Dark Art Society one? Yes. yes yeah, yes. wasn't that great? Yeah, he's he's oh my God. he's been on twice actually. Um, uh, yeah, he's great. He's a, he's a someone I found through there. I've been. Uh, uh, checking uh i've been reading a lot of his stuff 
lately and uh and i just started taking a tarot class from a guy named michael hughes he's the guy who um he did the bind trump ritual i think he got kind of famous for doing the bind oh really trump. i was gonna know about that yeah yeah it was there was a whole like ritual <laughs> to bind trump from <laughs> hurting people when after trump got elected and so he like created a ritual and and uh and and it kind of went viral so everyone who was magically oriented was was doing this thing to, oh my to God. keep her from doing too much damage. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to I want to ask him to come on the show because I I just start taking oh, yeah. his his uh, tarot class. It's so good, it's so eye opening because I was I've never really known the proper way to read them, and it's so interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little clueless in the regards of it, yeah. I've only had like the cursory you know you, you you pull a card you look it up online what it means and it's like it's really so much deeper than that it's so much more intuitive it's really interesting so um um yeah so i was thinking about asking him to come on too there's so many great people to have on get your brother on there's so many people i'll never run out of people i'll never run out of guests for this yeah, show. No, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's that's incredible yeah that's, uh, like i said that's the most valuable thing like getting back to the whole uh, um the human element of art um right uh, it, hey, you can't like, have an interview with an AI, or maybe you yeah, can. Exactly. You, you want <laughs> yeah. to know story? You want to know how you know what brought them to this thing? Was it some fucked up dream they had? Right. Or, yeah. Kind of, uh, was it some pivotal moment, or you know, did they go through hardships to get to where they were? You know, it's it's, it's all it's all utterly fascinating. As much yeah. as much as. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It's it's it's. Uh, yeah, you know, and I, I started you know doing the podcast it's just like a thing to do for fun and promotion and you know just to do a podcast and and uh someone mentioned that i'm documenting the dark art scene which it never occurred to me it's like that is kind of cool to to it's it's it these interviews with all the dark artists are being like documented for everyone to check out for to to, to prove that absolutely to prove that we exist that this scene exists yeah you know? <laughs> and, and it's like you get you get all the background of all the people i just i just think that's why i'm so like that's really one of my biggest focuses um this year and next year i'm almost to the point where i'm gonna be able to get monetized on youtube just to try and I heard that when you get monetized where you can make money, it like kicks you up in the algorithm. So pe more people yeah. see it. But um, I just, I, I am such a believer in the podcast. I think it's so good that, and I feel like it should be out to more people. More people need to see it. Cause I just think it's that good. It's like every time I do yeah, no, it's, it's, it's it's something, I keep, it's I keep trying to tell people that there are people I know that would love to love to know this existed. Yeah. Know, right. A lot of people still don't know. know. A lot of people yeah, still yeah. don't know. Because we're always, we're always, I'm always talking to friends about like, uh, oh yeah, this art, like even the way they think and all that stuff, and we don't want more, you know, more about them and all that. Says, so, well, there's this thing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's just that it's uh, like it's not a, it's not a, even, a, it's not a, a humble brag either. It's like it's, I really feel like it's the artists, the artists from this whole movement are so interesting. You know, just hearing yeah. everyone talk it, it, that. For some reason, it's it's a great it's just a great it's it's a high quality group of people that are very interesting and have really interesting ideas and uh, I just think it's like this amazing untapped resource of all these artists in this dark art scene I believe you know so anyway that's one of the big focuses for me is just getting getting uh, uh, the podcast out to more people cause, just because it's cool you know and it helps everybody helps the listeners yeah, it's good for the listeners and it's absolutely. good for the artists promote the artists people inspired to get people get yeah people going. you know if they're, they're you know you know maybe in a state of doubt or, you know, right um you know if there's something about, and again just again like i was saying before about my friend looking at my depression just a few right chosen words right change everything totally man yeah. yeah yeah so i feel like i'm on a righteous mission with this podcast and i feel like we are all kind of on this righteous mission all of the artists in, in you know in the dark art world especially i think all artists are really but you know we're dark we're dark people we're dark artist people so it's like <laughs> i i always stick up for them first so we're i think we're all kind of on this righteous mi mission to do whatever we do yeah yeah whatever it is we're doing. <laughs> <laughs>
But man, it was so great to talk to you. Uh, thanks for yes, no, taking I, the time. I'm really delighted to catch up. Yeah, I, yeah, and I, I didn't realize you're. I mean, you're actually quite a bit closer to me now. So, um, you know, we could we could have some Zello pizza or. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. No, let's definitely uh, figure that out. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do what I can to remain in this area. Um, yeah. I'm gonna hit. I have a friend who lives there. I'm gonna hit him up as soon as we get off. I'm gonna text him. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, any, any, if it's in any possible way I can, you know, you know just uh, find a room of my own uh, within this neighborhood would be spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can, if you can find slash manifest a black guinea pig walking down the street <laughs> i think you could probably find slash manifest a yeah, place I, to live in that neighborhood really, really that's a lot easier than a, yeah. than a black guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane so okay so anyway uh we'll we'll wrap it up don't hang up when i stop recording but um uh people can find your book at paulkomoda.com and i'll have links in the in the description and we'll share it on social media and all that stuff. Okay, cool, cool. And uh, the Patreon is live. Yes, so, the Patreon. Uh, come one, come all. I I searched Paul Komoda Patreon and your Patreon came out. I Googled it and that came right up. So, um, and the, but I'll have a link. I'll have a link in the oh, description as well. And uh, so you just, the only thing left is just to say goodbye to the audience. Yeah. Goodbye, audience. Goodbye, audience. Goodbye, audience.